the woodwork shop. The name has changed from Dobbs Honda Mendenhall to Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall, and everything else stays the same. Same great people on the floor, same great service department, same great deals on new Hondas and certified used cars, and Kenny Myers still running the show. Dobbs has actually been an Auto Nation store for over 15 years, but now for marketing and advertising purposes nationwide, the sign on the building says Auto Nation. So let's kick things off with the Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall Summer Sell Down event. Vacation time means vans and SUVs, and Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall has Odysseys and Pilots that comfortably seat eight and still have room for your gear. The new 2013 Accord is roomier, quieter, and more fuel efficient than any Accord ever made. When you mix the number one retailer of cars and trucks in America with the number one down home sales and service store in Memphis, you get Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall. Call Kenny Myers at 848-5507 or drop by and visit at 2875 Mendenhall Road South. Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall. The home of the Ole Miss Rebels, Memphis Redbirds, and the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis, a Flynn Broadcasting Company. 50 years ago, you could have paid less than $13,000 for a new house or less than $3,300 for a new car. Did you know that 50 years ago, you could have also gone to Lads to buy your new golf car? That's how long they've been helping people in the Mid-South with their turf, golf, and utility vehicle needs. A gallon of gas is nowhere near 29 cents anymore. But even after 50 years, you can still get a great deal on a new or used golf car at Lads. Lads is the only authorized club car dealer in the Mid-South, and club car is the best you can buy. Lads can customize your gas or electric golf car to your specifications. Whether you use it for golfing, hunting, or hauling loads around your property, let Lads show you what is possible. Golf cars are not just for golf anymore. Call Lads today at 324-8801, online at lads.net, or just go by and see them at Witten and I-40 for the best golf cars in the business. Lads and Club Car, driven for 50 years. Memphis people love to eat local, and we're excited to tell you about one of Memphis's newest local, authentic delis that everyone is buzzing about, Elwood Shack. Elwood's is located at the corner of Summer and Perkins, right next to the Lowe's contractor entrance. Brand new hours are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and 7 to 4 on Saturday. Elwood Shack is packing authentic ingredients, flavor, and quality into every plate. For breakfast, try the barbecue breakfast burrito and biscuits made from scratch. For lunch and dinner, Elwood's offers a variety of items that include a great meat Meatball sub, delicious New York style roast beef, terrific Chicago and New York style hot dogs, and the best beef brisket in the city. Slow smoked a pecan and hickory and cooked with Guinness stout. And for all you wing lovers, you have to try the authentic Jamaican jerk full wings marinated for 24 hours and seasoned with Elwood's magic dust, served with ranch and jerk sauce. Finish off any fantastic dish with the mouth-watering world-famous pecan pie made in-house daily. Do yourself a favor and check out Memphis's best kept secret, Elwood Shack. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It's 302 on Bash. After last night's home run derby gave us plenty of entertainment, tonight's All-Star game will hope to bring the same. 8 o'clock Central Time or 7 o'clock Central Time on ESPN is the National League versus the American League with Matt Harvey towing the rubber and on the mound as he's comfortable with in his home park. Max Scherzer is your starter for the American League side. Major League Baseball says it's moving ahead with plans to expand instant replay for umpires' calls next year. It's about time, I'd say. MLB Executive Vice President Joe Torre said, we're pretty confident we'll have it in place for 2014. Video reviews have been in place for home run calls since 2008. Bud Selig initially wanted to add trap plays and fair foul calls down the line for 2013, but a change was put off while more radical options were being examined. In other MLB news, the Baseball's Player Association says any suspensions resulting from the sport's latest drug investigation likely, likely won't be served until next year if the discipline is challenged before an arbitrator. Union head Michael Weiner says he expects Major League Baseball will notify the union of its plans for penalties in the next month, and the union will maintain that any discipline should not be announced until after arbitrator Frederick Horowitz upholds a ban. Of course, you know it's SEC Media Days down in Hoover, Alabama. We've got you covered for the entire week right here on Sports 56, WHBQ, and 87.7 FM. We'll have guests and sound all week long as our very own Fish and Stats broadcast live from Radio Row. 
Sports Report brought to you by Cowboy Corner. Visit Cowboy Corner Boots and Jeans, where you'll find over 5,000 pair of Western boots and work boots for the entire family. you can also find lots of jeans and Western apparel, lots of service, and lots of savings. Cowboy Corner on Goodman Road in South Haven. It's time for Fish and Stats on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Fish and Stats is presented by Auto Nation GMC. Now, here are your hosts, Rob Fisher and Brett Norsworthy. Welcome, everyone, to Fish and Stats on this Tuesday afternoon. We are live from SEC Media Days in Hoover, Alabama at the Winfrey Hotel. Where we are going to be the next couple of days as SEC Media Days got underway today. And we will hear a lot uh, from what has happened so far today at SEC Media Days. And we'll have plenty of guests for you throughout the program today as well and get you caught up to date on everything that has uh, been happening uh, this afternoon as uh, the 2013 version of SEC Media Days is underway. Hello, Stats. It is underway, and it's a lot of fun. We're glad to be here with you, and it's a lot of fun to be talking college football this fast and this furious in the summer, the downhill slide of the summer, it, it, it has started. This is football season, and it felt like it upstairs today. I didn't cheer for the commissioner, did you? No, that was odd. It was odd. Why are we clapping for the commissioner? No kidding. <laughs> I don't. Oh, we didn't get any of the check. Oh, yes, seven titles. Woo, go commissioner. I, I mean, I, who cheered? Nobody's giving me a dime. We're here working. I was always told you have on a credential. It's like being at church. No cheering, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was kind of odd. It was, it was, it was kind of awkward. I kind of looked around like, are we supposed to clap? I mean, is that what Mike Slive? Is that what Mike Slive ex expects? I no, mean, are we I, supposed to clap for him? I like Mike Slive a lot, and the job he's done is extraordinary. <laughs> but and I applaud him for what he's done. But you didn't applaud. But I didn't applaud. No, I did not. Uh, but there were many uh, that did today, and it was very interesting. We've had some news today. We had the big news, obviously, before this whole thing even started with Johnny Manziel yesterday. And tomorrow certainly is going to be a lot of Johnny Manziel uh, here at, at the hotel. But today it was Gary Pinkle talking about James Franklin goes into camp as the number one quarterback. Healthy. I don't think that's big news. Uh, Will Muschamp uh, really making a commitment to running the football at Florida and saying 1,000-yard rusher will now be the norm at Florida. They've never had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rusher. Never had a back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rusher. And last let, year... Let that sink in. That's incredible. That, that's Emick Smith's alma mater. Yeah. And last year, Mike Eric Gillisley Red, had Red over... Taylor. <laughs> yeah, you could probably list a few more, too. Mike Gillisley last year over 1,000, first time they've had a 1,000-yard back since 2004. And now he's gone, uh, but Will Muschamp saying that will be the norm going forward. Will Muschamp taking some shots at the school in Ohio for turning them in. Wanted to thank them for keeping Florida up to date on how the NCAA rules. Rob, that wasn't just shots at the school in Ohio. <laughs> that was shots at his predecessor. Yes, that's exactly what that was. Uh, Mike Slive even talking about basketball scheduling today. Basketball? Are we allowed to talk about Basketball, that yeah. Talked a little basketball. and Florida and Mizzou have come through thus far. I was, I was afraid we'd get kicked out if we talked any basketball. Yeah, I didn't, th I didn't think we were supposed to, uh, although Slive made it very clear when he said uh, it did not meet our expectations. And then he quickly talked about it and said, all right, now back to football. <laughs> right, which, <laughs> again, that, that's the status of basketball in the Southeastern <laughs> Conference. I mean, it feels a lot, a lot like 1970. Oh, yeah, yeah, no question. And uh, Ole Miss and South Carolina will be making their way through here this afternoon, we'll visit with a couple of the members of the Ole Miss party. Mike Mary is going to join us here on the program this afternoon. And uh, also on the show today, we are uh, going to visit with Hugh Freeze uh, today as well. We're going to visit with the head coach of the Ole Miss Rebels. And uh, also Athletics Director Ross Bjork is going to join us uh, a little later on in the show. We'll hear from Gary Pinkle talking about his quarterback, James Franklin, also Brian Burwell. St. Louis Post-Dispatch is going to join us. He's here covering SEC, and we'll talk to him about Gary Pinkle's hot seat. He had some interesting things to say about Gary Pinkle when I chatted with him earlier about what he expects from Coach Pinkle this year. And I'm going to let him know just how you've turned on your hometown, the town that you had your child baptized in. I'm gonna let Brian, Brian Burwell can't say bad things because when I moved <laughs> to Memphis, Brian had moved – to St. Louis about two weeks prior to that. And when I was moving, I had to break my lease at my apartment. Instead, 
just handed it over to Brian Burwell. What a deal! Just moved on into so my he, place after I left. So you got it. You got a nice, uh, <laughs> nice touch there. Right. But I'm going to let him know that you don't want anything there. You don't want basketball nope, tournament there. You don't want SEC media days. No. Nope. You don't even want Mizzou. St. Louis Post Dispatch sent two people down here. And when I saw Brian, I said, "Aren't you an All Star?" <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. He I said, got five guys there. He, he said, what, 19 wasn't enough to cover? <laughs> Phil Savage will join us. He's the analyst for the Crimson Tide, also does some work on Sirius XM Radio and the executive director of the Senior Bowl. He's a busy man. Uh, we'll hear from Will Muschamp, the Florida head coach, talking about the offense of Florida, which is the biggest question mark coming into this season. And uh, we will get a little baseball today. All-star game tonight. Dave Chase is going to join us, normally joins us on Wednesday. But with the all-star game tonight, we'll check in with Dave this afternoon. So a lot of things to get into today. Um, and Hugh Freeze, as I mentioned, going to be joining us uh, here coming up in a little bit. So why don't we go ahead and get to our top story today. Top story of the day. Couple of them. Couple of them. Go right ahead. All right, I'll start. Uh, Mike Slive started off the media days today by opening up his brag bag of the SEC and the 86 national championships since the year 2000, the seven national championships this past year, blah, 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 we're great, got a lot of money, just pretty much the same thing, just add another year that we hear every year. But then the tone changed a little bit and turned quickly into a critique of the NCAA and current practices, jabbing at the rule book. And it, it was interesting because it was a lot about full cost of attendance. It was a lot about the welfare of student athletes. And he about went as far as he could without saying, we are about to leave the NCAA. It was right. That's what I thought. It, it felt like it was right up to it. And these are going to be some historic years, the next years ahead. And I think for Mike Slive, it will be a battle that he would have, that he will have to wage and not leave that to a successor. Yeah, and it was uh, it was interesting stuff. He talked about being committed to the review of the scheduling process in football going forward. Nothing has been set. Nine game schedule, eight games schedule. He said uh, we will select a format that, in the long term, is the best interest interest of the entire conference. So he addressed it, but nothing came out of it. Commissioner Slive loves a committee, and he gives them real in- it's real input. He really wants to. Uh, Ole Miss Chancellor Dan Jones right now, the, the chairman of the concussion committee, and, he, and it's work. He he sends he puts them to work, and he wants that. He wants the big room, a lot of different ideas, and then he makes a decision. Also, he talked about, as I mentioned, the basketball schedule and basketball not meeting expectations and that they are working feverishly to improve the non-conference schedule throughout the SEC. Talked about min- increase the minimum GPA for uh, – student athletes and talked about solutions and strategies to help with the NCAA that and went on to say the NCAA has not been successful then even went a little further when it came to the NCAA here's the commissioner earlier this afternoon in order to deal with these and other national issues in an effective way intercollegiate athletics requires remarkable and innovative leadership to slash through our Gordian knot Our challenges are complex, they always have been, and they always will be. With that said, we have supported and continue to support the NCAA as the appropriate governing organization for intercollegiate athletics. But at the same time, however, we will continue to push for changes we believe are in the best interest of our student athletes. And as we push for change, we are encouraged by the NCAA's ongoing review of its governance structure. Moving forward, there are important questions that need to be answered. For example, what changes need to be made to the NCAA structure to provide significant roles for the stakeholders? The presidents, chancellors, athletic directors, institutional administrators, conference administrators, and coaches. What is the proper role, function, and composition and size of the NCAA Board of Directors? Do we need all of the services provided by the NCAA's National Office 
its many committees and task forces, or are some of these services better provided elsewhere? And how do we streamline the NCAA committee and legislative processes to involve leaders and visionaries who will ensure the NCAA's future? In the words of James Baldwin, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. Mike's live earlier today, and he went as far as you could without saying, yeah, we don't need the NCAA, and basically calling it a dis disorganized organization. Gauntlet. Thrown sound down to like it. And if anybody's going Line to in the sand, cross it. I don't I don't know if I go that far, okay. but 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 if anybody's going to put them on notice, the NCAA or the SEC has that power to do it. Mike Slive has that power. It's not gonna be the Gulf South. No. <laughs> Britt Manowski gets up and says that he's like, Who are you? All right. What about the T V contract? I mean that that's the next question. Be glad you have a home TV. <laughs> right. So I um I, I found it interesting. I found it pretty authoritative, and it'd be interesting to see how the NCAA would react. I mean, a lot of the things he talked about today were about, I mean, just NCAA policy and NCAA decisions and what authority they have and how they're using their authority and how he believes it's wrong. It was definitely authoritative. It was not a cry for help. It wasn't even cry to it. It was, it was, it was authoritative. It was a... It, it almost seemed like it's a, we're bigger than you, you need to listen to us. It was close. <laughs> it, was, it was real close. But I liked it. I liked it coming from him because I didn't expect that well, he, to come out of it. He, he has that punch. He can. Yeah, absolutely. And not many can, and the ones that can, now it's probably time for them to do it. Yeah. Uh, not, or you have a top story today. I, I do have a top story. I've heard a lot of conversation about it when it, and it will tie into the knot is the reason why I wanted to bring it up because I know what one of your your knots will be. I didn't think, Rob, that I would ever seriously hear a conversation in these parts among people that cover this league and fans of this league and fans of Alabama ever openly talk about what Bill Battle, he cracked the subject open this earlier this summer with Saban or Bear, Bear versus Saban. I knew if it ever started, it would be because somebody won and won a whole lot, and not even our friend Gene Stallings won enough to have that conversation. The similarities and, and the, the kinship and the friendship and almost father-son love that they they had, everybody knew that, but it was never any comparing. And, and Gene Stallings, the man, Gene Stallings, football coach, really good one, but it was never any comparing of those two records. We know at the end of this year if Nick Saban wins another one and if, she, if he could go undefeated and win, and win another one, then it's open season on that conversation, and it, it's fair. And I never, I never thought I would see it, but I knew if I ever or never see it or hear it, I knew if I ever saw it or heard it, it would be because somebody's won a whole bunch. Well, somebody's won a whole bunch. Well, it, well yeah, I, I mean, he already has won a whole bunch, and, the more he just continues to do it and they have a foothold on the entire Southeastern Conference, the conversation has to be made. And the the, the, the great, the pioneer that Bear was, that'll never change. No. His greatness will never change. But when you talk about what a guy accomplished, I mean, it's, it's tough. I mean, Nick Saban's starting to put himself in his own category. I would suggest to people that enter into the conversation, and I, I'm sure going to do it, you don't have to run the other one down to prop whatever side you're taking up. Accept, them, accept both of them, but at the end of this year, Bill Battle already says it's time to. At the end of this year, it sure will be time to talk, talk about that. Well, and that takes us to our not top story today. Not top story of the day. Dominique Easley is here from the University of Florida. He was asked about Bear Bryant. Today. Twenty years old. Twenty years old. Yes. He was asked about Coach Bryant. He said uh, he wasn't familiar with the name, and <laughs> then asked if that was some sort of cartoon or something. Right. 
<laughs> and to some 120 and not from around here, I can understand that. I don't know why people keep – every year somebody kind of wants to ask them about people like that. I bet Steve Spur – well, not maybe not Steve Spurrier, but Galen Hall, Gary Darnell, uh, Charlie Pell, Doug Dickey. I bet he doesn't know those names at Florida. No. And, and there, there are some Alabama – well, I don't know how anybody in Alabama wouldn't know, but – it still matters to a lot of people's parents playing now, but everything passes. It's fine. I mean, it's just kind of comical. For and then it just shows how young these kids are. Well, you know, it's it's over thirty years ago that that Bear passed away. Right. It's been a long, long time. So as long as he knows the Florida history, of being a Florida Gator, I'm okay with it. I don't have a problem. You know, it, it, it disturbs me when Major League Baseball players, particularly the, the, the few African-American Major League Baseball players that we have now, when they don't know if someone like Kurt Flood are not that up on Jackie Robinson. I think they should, but if you don't, that's okay. I think you should, but it's not the end of time if you don't. If an Alabama player really wasn't that versatile, now once you get there, you You'd have to be blind. Not Put to yourself understand. back in college. Now add a sport that you're playing, which is a full time job when you're in college. Probably didn't do a whole lot of research on no other sports. No, and and <laughs> but but I think somewhere in in the football culture, the football climate, almost as a primer of your program, people should know your the history of your program, but not everybody else's. Right. Right. So I don't have a problem. I mean, everybody can't be Peyton no. and, 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 and show up no more about the SEC than anybody. Right. We uh, we mentioned it earlier about uh, Will Muschamp, and Will Muschamp said today, and I quote, we appreciate our friends from Ohio making sure we follow the NCAA rules. They know something about NCAA rules. Direct shot at uh, not only the Ohio State University, but also the predecessor at the University of Florida. The SEC is definitely on Urban Meyer and Ohio State's mind and on the athletics director at Ohio State and on the Big Ten commissioner's mind. I don't see the need for the SEC to ever respond. All the SEC's got to say is scoreboard. Absolutely. Trophy case. Yeah. I, I, I handled it all right. I mean, you're asked about it this week. You're going to be asked about those things. Now you've got to handle them. Yeah, and, and, and we beg for people to give a candid answer, and then they do. You kind of want to take, take a, a little issue with it. I like Will Muschamp. Did he ever breathe? Holy smokes. He started and went about, I think it was 13 minutes without taking a breath. I think he'd be fun to play for. It was incredible. He'd be intense. He's an intense fella. You'd know you're playing big boy college football. You'll, I think you'll love the guy when you're 40. Right. And he, I, I think Will Muschamp will win big at Florida. If he doesn't, he'll be out because I don't think Jeremy Foley is going to sit by very long for somebody not to win big there. He, he uh, wants to make Florida the Alabama of the East. He talked about the uh, offensive questions that Florida may have, and uh, we'll get into those uh, coming up a little bit later on here in the program this afternoon when we hear from Will Muschamp. Uh, I did think it was also interesting that uh, Gary Pinkle today, one of his comments saying that they are not going to have two-a-days at the University of Missouri this year. Uh, because he wants to keep his he team healthy. Not a thing wrong with it. I, I don't know why we do it as much as we do it, because it's year-round now. These guys, you're, you're basically back there Memorial Weekend, freshmen, all, all of them. So, you know, getting getting somebody on campus to get them in shape, it's just not necessary at all. I, I, I don't know if, if two-a-days and that rigorous August routine is, is necessary anymore. Absolutely. Uh, as we mentioned uh, this morning, it was uh, Florida. And Mizzou this afternoon, it is Ole Miss and South Carolina, and it's a pleasure to welcome to the program just upon his arrival uh, here at the Winfrey Hotel, head coach of the Ole Miss Rebels, Hugh Freeze is with us. Coach, good afternoon. Good afternoon, guys. How are we doing? We're doing well. Welcome to media day. <laughs> Thank Take you. a quick drink. Take uh, a breath. Go yeah. tell you, man. Well, our SID, Kyle Campbell, had had at least 100 degrees on the airplane <laughs> and, and the trip over. So we'll give him, he, he takes blame for everything on media day, you know. I've been dying to ask you this. I asked you this before last year. After your one year as offensive coordinator at Arkansas State and your one year as head coach at Arkansas State, I ask you how much of your offense you had in. You said 70%. Yeah. After one year at Ole Miss, how much of your offense do you have in? 
Uh, probably uh, 40, 50%. Is that right? Yeah. You know, I, I think it takes probably three to four years to, to get everything in, and we probably shouldn't run everything anyway. No, the, the truth be known, we probably should uh, stay with about that 40%. We'd probably be better. Brett Bielema and Nick Saban want you to run about 10% of it, don't you? Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm sure I get asked about that. I'm ready, I'm ready yeah, for that ready question. For that? Yeah. <laughs> Coach, uh, I, I thought last year, last year going into the season, I, I thought it was a big year for Vanderbilt because the year prior they played a lot of young guys and they lost a lot of close games. Right. But, but sometimes you have to learn how to lose, and you have to learn what it takes to actually win. Yeah. I think you're kind of in that same boat this year. You you yeah. you competed against some tough competition, especially at times when it looked like. I mean, heck, it, there were games you lost that guys could have just said, "Boy, yeah. this is terrible." We can just and not throw it in now and yeah. not bounce back. And Announcers you, went home and cried to and yeah. sleep. Yeah. I know one yeah. of them sitting next to me. Yeah. I think that's for you this year. How much do you feel like those guys learn from those tough experiences? Well. Like uh, certainly, I, I think the thing that we were most proud of is the way that our kids were resilient and bounced back after very difficult losses like A&M, Vanderbilt, and LSU, and with some critical games that came up next, and, and easily those could have gone our way, but, but they didn't, and that's that's life, that's football, that's, that's the way it goes, particularly in this league. And um, So uh, I think those experiences are, will certainly be beneficial to us going into to year two. I don't know that that guarantees that uh, you're going to have a better record or, or, or better outcomes, but uh, I don't think it would be because we're shocked that uh, we had a disappointment or anything. So um, th- that would be very beneficial to us. But a lot of things went right last year. Started the same five offensive linemen, 13 yeah. games. Yeah. Can you get you that just, fortunate again? Well, no, I don't think so. I don't think it ever happens uh, very rarely in, in, at any level. So, um I, I, you know, I think spring was a, a good awakening again for us, and I don't know if our fans want to hear it, but, um, you know, when we lost a few linemen in spring, we went from being um, decent to, to really below average, and we were fortunate last year to keep our receivers healthy and our O-line healthy and uh, D-line healthy, and um, will that uh, occur again? Probably not. And I do think we've addressed the depth issues some, but I still think we're a year away from looking at a depth chart and saying, "All right, now you know." And that looks looks like uh, what our competitors are playing with. Speaking of health wise, uh, Bo Wallace coming off the surgery, yeah. but he has been back uh, throwing. How do you, how does he uh, how's he feeling so yeah, far? I hadn't witnessed him throwing yet, uh, obviously, but um, uh, you know he communicates pretty good with me. I think he feels really good. He's got some soreness, but this week is the first week they've really turned him loose to throw it down the field. And he's had some soreness this week, but they, they feel like that's very normal. And uh, I think he'll be ready to go. You're a great recruiting class. How many of those do you think can run out on the field against Vanderbilt? Uh, well, you know, it's it's hard to say. Um, but uh, we certainly anticipate quite a few of them playing. I wish we didn't, but uh, but we do. And, um, you know, it's hard to say a number. Probably two, two weeks into camp I'll have a better idea of that. But... Um, I'm excited about what I see, you know, from them and their attitude and the way they're going about preparing as freshmen. As you approach camp, what's something that you know when camp starts, this is what we need to really shore up on yeah. the team? Well, take care of the football offensively and defensively, uh, negate the, the big plays. You know, we had way too many of those that we gave up, and then uh, we turned it over way too many times. But um, the, those two things will be uh, points of uh, heavy emphasis. Well, Coach, uh, we thank you for stopping by. Uh, get upstairs and get ready for the question. Yeah, you know man. what's coming. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Best of luck this year, Coach. Uh, Hugh Freeze uh, joining us uh, here on Radio Row uh, here in Hoover. Uh, as SEC Media Days and Ole Miss uh, has arrived here at the Winfrey Hotel. We'll also visit with uh, Mike Mary coming up. And uh, also join us a little later. Ross Bjork uh, will visit here on the program. Fishing stats just underway. And a good start. Heard from Mike Slive already. Heard from Hugh Freeze, head coach of the Ole Miss Rebels already. And we got a lot to get into before we're out of here at 6 o'clock today. We are live from SEC Media Days, and we thank our sponsors for getting us here. FRS Power Sports, Body for Life, Dilday TV, Cougar Chemical, and Auto Nation GMC, 2621 South Mendenhall. They are an Auto Nation company. And they rank number one in all of AutoNation in sales and service customer satisfaction. They're at 2621 South Mendenhall, and they are AutoNation. GMC, we will take a break. Just underway, Fish and Stats, live from SEC Media Days on Sports 56, 87.7 FM. 
Did you miss your favorite Sports 56 show? Check out the podcast at sports56whbq.com. Eyes for You and AccuView have several great specials to choose from. That's right. For just $99, you receive two boxes of AccuView, two or one pair of lined bifocals, or two pair of eyeglasses that all include exam. Eyes for You also offers AccuView Oasis for Presbyopia for $159, AccuView Oasis $134.90, and AccuView Oasis for Astigmatism for $159, all including comprehensive eye exam, 60-day follow-up care, solution kit, and two multi-packs of AccuView Oasis for Presbyopia, Eyes for You, and AccuView also offer contact lenses for that hard-to-fit patient. Eyes for You has four convenient locations to serve you in the Memphis area. They have same-day appointments and open Saturday. Eyes for You, your one-stop shop for AccuView. And don't forget the $99 special that includes your exam. Call the Eyes for You nearest you today and save. All right, guys, time to make some decisions that will affect your entire football season. Are you going to fall for the game of the week or the year or the decade from somebody who lies about their 80% win rate, starts off talking a lot of smack, but disappears about two-thirds of the way through the season? Someone who promises a whole lot of free picks and then starts their high-pressure sales routine. Somebody who doesn't even use their real name. How about going with somebody you know and trust, a rain man in all-star sports? Our first 15 special is underway. The first 15 customers who sign up get season football, college and pro, and season basketball, college and pro, $1,500 total cost. And you get every play we make, no exceptions, 10 star plays included. This year, late money updates will be texted to our season customers. Call us at 461-4600 or check out the specials at therainman.com. Our 36th football season is coming up. We want you to be part of it. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It's 3.30. I'm Bash. After last night's home run derby gave us plenty of entertainment, and we hope for the same out of the All-Star game tonight. 7 o'clock Central Time will be the first pitch on ESPN. It's the National League versus the American League. Matt Harvey's towing the rubber on the national side. It's in his own home park, so he'll be pretty comfortable. Max Scherzer is your starter for the American League side as well. Major League Baseball says it's moving ahead with plans to expand instant replay for umpires' calls next season. It's about time, I'd say. Major League Baseball Executive Vice President Joe Torre said, we're pretty confident we'll have it in place for the 2014 season. In other MLB news, Baseball's Player Association says in any suspensions resulting from the sport's latest drug investigation likely won't be served until next season if the discipline is challenged before an arbitrator. The SEC Media Day is down in Hoover, Alabama. We've got all the coverage you need right here on Sports 56, WHBQ, and 87.7 FM. Plenty of guests and sound all week long. Survey your own fish and stats broadcast live from Radio Row. That's a couple of NBA notes as well. After losing their first two NBA Summer League games over the weekend, the Memphis Grizzlies are back at it tonight. They'll take on the Phoenix Suns. That game starts at 7.30 Central Time. You can catch it on NBA TV. In other NBA news, the Miami Heat and Ford Mike Miller's agent last night that they will use their amnesty clause on Miller and Nick's guard and sixth man of the year, J.R. Smith, underwent knee surgery. He'll be out three to four months. The sports report is brought to you by Country Ford. Whatever it takes, Country Ford gets it done for you. Visit Country Ford in South Haven at 95 East Goodman Road or shop online at countryford.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Fish and Stats so with you. I mentioned our sponsors before we got into the break, and we thank them all for being a big part of what we're doing this week at SEC Media Days. Greg Gaston here for Middays, and Keith Parker here this afternoon on the Press Box, and we'll be wrapping it up each afternoon here on Fish and Stats. Joining other shows. Absolutely. Joining in on the mornings, and I uh, want to thank... Uh, FRS Power Sports, uh, one of our uh, sponsors, 2175 Witten, Ro- Witten Road, uh, known for the wide selection of uh, Can-Am Spiders, sea motorcycles, and more. Well, that sounds like a fun place to go, Stats. Uh, open Monday through Saturday. Give them a call, 385-9366, 385-9366, or visit online at www.frspowersports.com. frspowersports.com uh, is uh, how you can get a hold of them, and we thank them for being a part of what we are doing this week at SEC Media Days, and it's a pleasure now uh, sitting down and joining us 
uh, our next guest here at SEC Media Days, linebacker for the Ole Miss Rebels, Senior Mike Mary is with us. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Uh, we're doing very well. Uh, you, you're, you're known as a uh, big, ferocious hitter in this SEC, and, you, and you're wearing pink. I don't know what people <laughs> would think of that, Mike. Looking good, though. <laughs> but looking good. <laughs> Blame it on Dante. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I know guys always, you know, it's a big deal. I mean, you're, this is, you're on a big stage here today, going yes, around, sir. doing all the interviews. You're up at the podium. How did you pick this ensemble today? Um, really just Dante, talking to Dante, he, he, he told me to um, try to wear more colors this year. Cause that's what he did last year. And just so happened we end up having similar colors on. <laughs> you, <laughs> well, perfect. It looks good. You, you didn't get Denzel to weigh in on it? Uh, no, nah, I, I, that's who I should have talked to, Denzel. <laughs> this would be his element, wouldn't uh -huh, it? Yes, sir. Just talk for three. It, he should come for every day of SEC media. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, being a senior uh, and – Looking at the success the team had last year, this has to be that first off season since you've been at Ole Miss where you couldn't wait to get it going again. Yes, sir. Um, just came out excited. Everybody came out ready to work out. No matter how hard the workout is, everybody competed and everybody had fun. So I'm just looking forward to see if we can carry it over into fall camp and so, into the season. So Paul Jackson's fun. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Strength and conditioning guys are fun. No, they are not. But you got to put that work in there. There's so much work done. There's nobody in the stands, is it? No, you got to put that work in. Yes, sir. Just, just you, the coaches, and the sun, the hot sun. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> what was uh, what was the big part of the success last year? Why, why were you guys able to play so well as a as a unit? Um, just buying into what the coaches were telling us and telling us to do, and doing what the little things on and off the field uh, as Coach Freeze advised us to do. I think that's, that was the main thing in our turnaround with handling the little things better. It's easy to buy into those things when the W's start coming. Yes, sir. Uh, isn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and, and defensively, you know, I, I mean, we talk about the hitting, and I, I, I told Brett a couple of times last year, you know, the Texas game, the Alabama game, you lost those games. Mm -hmm. But it seemed to me early in the game, a lot of teams may show up against those teams just – because they have to show up, <laughs> and, and, and they, but they know what the end result's going to be. You guys went to win. Yes, you guys sir. went to win, and, and you guys felt you could win every game when you took the field. Yes, sir. Every game, we just go in and try to prepare the best that we can. We, we don't worry about the other team. We try to worry about what we do and what we're going to do to win, and that's how we look at every game. And in that Alabama game, the early big hits mm -hmm. that their crowd, the big woo hits <laughs> that ran on their jumbotron, it, 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 sent, a, it sent a sign, you know, you, you, may have, you may have more tonight, but we're going to fight. Yes, sir. And that's all you can do is fight. You can never give up. And that's that's one thing we, we believe in, never giving up, no matter what the score is, no matter what happens. And one of the biggest things you can do at Ole Miss is wear that number 38, and you're going to do that this year. Talk yes, about sir. that a little bit. Uh, it's a great honor to be able to um, be a part of that, that tradition. Um, just looking at the, some of the guys that got to wear it in previous years and Chucky Mother himself, it, it just gives you that much more responsibility and that much more urge to play harder and do things right and lead lead the team. Mike, we were just talking about players. A young man earlier was asked about Bear Bryant. He didn't know who he was. That's okay. But I think it's very important for you guys to learn the history of your program. I know you're already probably doing it, but l learn as much as you can in the story of Chucky Mullins. Yes, sir. Mike, thanks for stopping by. Enjoy, uh, enjoy media days and uh, look forward to seeing you back out on the field. Best of luck this season. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Mary uh, joining us uh, here at SEC Media Days. And um, – yeah, I, I, I think a lot of that credit has to go to Hugh uh, last year. I mean, th they had to change a culture of losing and a what was probably a culture of really not believing that they can win games because they went through a lot of losing, a lot off, of losing. It was off. It was everywhere. And last on year, the field, off the field. It just impressed me last year the way that they not only competed, but it, as, as Hugh even talked about when we had him on a little earlier, the way they bounced back a lot of times. They're not so sure, and it's good. The, the football team, they're not so sure when they go to class at 10 o'clock in the morning that at 10 after 10, the head football coach might walk in. <laughs> and he's subject to doing it. They're, they're the, the right kind on eggshells. I, I, I've got to do it every day, and that's the culture that Hugh had to change. And we mentioned Paul Jackson, a strength and conditioning guy. And they're going to, the strength and conditioning guys across the country will turn the football team over to the head coaches on on or around August 1st. And when he turns it over to Hugh Freeze, it, it'll be in shape and be ready. It's pretty remarkable stats when you look at this team on the defensive end. 
a guy like Denzel, uh, Kim DJ, who led the team in tackles, tackles for loss, forced fumbles. Oh, and by the way, he was a freshman uh, last year. Mike Mary had over 78 tackles and over 10 tackles uh, for loss. You have a guy like Isaac Gross who comes in now as a sophomore. Um, C.J. Johnson, hopefully back from his broken leg in the spring, had six and a half sacks before he went down. Now you bring in the nation's number one recruit in Robert Kimdiche. You have a lot. You have a young team, but you have a lot of SEC experience on that defense. Well, and, and a lot of it was gained in that disaster, disastrous 2-10 and ten, and then put together in more of a team concept by Hugh Freeze and his staff. And while I know in the Ole Miss world, heck, I'm tired of hearing it. I'm sure tired of trying to sell it a little bit. This year's going to be good. A year from today, I, I won't hold anybody back from almost any prediction. D double digits, nine, I, fine. You go, go as wild as you want. But for this year, I still think it needs to be part of that stair step, part of the incremental uh, of progress being made that, that, that's being made well in this great like, recruiting class they haven't started yet right but 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 like we talked about with coach freeze just how many times can you expect five across from from tackle to the other tackle yep. not to miss a single start it was very fortunate yes Bo was injured a lot of people didn't know i remember the play he got hurt, hurt on against tulane and then later uh Bo probably had a, a in the bowl game had a pretty good uh, uh con, not a concussion but took, took a pretty good hit had to come out. Barry Brunetti played very, very well that day. Just how how fortunate are you going to be on the on the injury front? The doomsday scenario for Ole Miss with that that brutal September is to start one, two, and something and have injuries. Right. Ole Miss, uh, their four of their first five games will be away from Oxford. They're at Vanderbilt to open it up. They host Semo at Texas, at Alabama, at Auburn. Important stretch of the season, I think, really stands when I look down the schedule. To me, that first game of the year might be the most important game. And it might be the for most important game for both teams. For, for both of them. Building but, on momentum. Right, because around the country we hear and we see progress. We hear about recruiting. We hear about these innovative young coaches that finally got their chance. You know, one through the high, with the great high school story, one – you know, spurned by Maryland when he was he, he was the coach in waiting, and Maryland probably regrets that decision. We hear about it. Well, we got to see it. Right. In, in opening nights, a, a time that you get to see it. Vandy's won five of the last six against Ole Miss. They don't go into that game with one ounce of trepidation. They look forward to that game every year, almost almost like Ole Miss had to match the state fans' intensity for the Egg Bowl. It's time for Ole Miss fans and the Ole Miss team to match Vandy's intensity for that game. Well, those first five games, you'd like you'd like to start with a winning record, three and two, before you have to take on Texas A&M, LSU back to back weeks at home. If you start three and two, that means beating Semo, but you're going to have to win two road games out of Vanderbilt, Texas, Alabama, Auburn. Yeah, and the, the two you you probably could get is, is one you got last year, and one you probably should have won could have won but didn't win at home, last yeah. year at, at home. Now they're both on the road. You know, When was the last time Ole Miss won at Auburn? I know the answer to that. Eli Manning was quarterback. Right. Uh, so four of the first five on the road, uh, then six straight home games. Don't, and don't leave the state of Mississippi. Six straight at home and then the Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving night. That's right. And out of those six straight home games, that's a huge stretch, maybe the key stretch for uh, Ole Miss this season. Uh but, again, you know, offensively, nine receivers played last year. Nine receivers are back. Biggest question being they don't have a tight end to play. Don't have a tight end and, and had a couple of injuries there. But out of that receiving core, and where are you going to have Laquan Treadwell uh, mesh into that system? You, you, you hope he's just so good he jumps the line. Right, absolutely. The number one uh, wide receiver recruit in the country. One other area of uh, improvement that is – Needed is the, uh, well, special teams. They gave up three big returns last year. Three big returns, but ha had a couple returns. Yep. Got, got to learn to stop a little better, and that that's a, a function of, of depth. When you have that many starters out there that are already tired from being out there, either on offense or defense, that ha that they have to play special teams, you're, you're, you're playing with fire. And Ole Miss got burned a couple times last year. One thing for Laquan Treadwell, 
is in Grant Hurd's system, it's not just you get to catch the ball and run around and look pretty. You have to block. The blocking wide receivers improved so much last year. Vince Sanders, John Mess Logan, and, and Dante Moncrief did it well as a freshman. His didn't have to improve a lot, but it, it's almost a requirement. You're, you're not just going to be able to snag footballs. you got to block, too, when, when somebody else is running it. We'll take a break. We'll come back, and uh, we'll talk a little Mizzou. We'll hear from Gary Pinkle about his quarterback, James Franklin, who went through a rough season last year at Mizzou in the Tigers' first year in the Southeastern Conference. We'll do that when we return here on Fish and Stats, live from Radio Row and SEC Media Days on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. We are the voice of Tigers fans. Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Brian Elder's roof. Solutions. I'm Brian Elder. Are you getting three estimates to replace your roof? Go ahead and set your appointments with the other two guys, then call me. I'm going to measure your roof from outer space and give you a quote right over the phone, 867-0303. Let me introduce you to a beautiful standing seam metal roof, the last roof you'll ever have to buy. They last forever, increase the value of your home, and they're not as expensive as you may think. Let me see your current roof. I may be able to get your insurance company to behave themselves and pay for a brand new roof. Roof. Don't let them tell you it has to be replaced. I may be able to repair it and save you thousands. 867-0303. Commercial flat roofs. TPO rubberized flat roofs that will outlive your grandkids. 867-0303. 867-0303 for BrianElderRoofing.com. Call 867-0303. Brian Elder's Roofing Solutions. Summer specials are sizzling at Edwin Watts Golf. Come celebrate our 45th anniversary with markdowns on name brand golf clubs and balls. And incredible deals on a wide selection of trendy shoes and apparel that will have you teeing off in style. To thank you for your patronage, stop by the stores in Memphis and Cordova to pick up your $10 off customer appreciation certificate. Minimal purchase required. And don't forget to beat the summer heat and tune up your game with a free custom fitting session. That's Edwin Watts Golf on North Germantown Parkway in Cordova and Poplar Avenue in Memphis. Your spots for sizzling summer deals. Hi folks, Rob Walker, Infinity of Memphis, with great news for anyone looking for a local, late model, low mileage, one owner Infinity vehicle. Last month, Infinity offered their lease customers the opportunity to come out of their lease early, as long as the customer agreed to lease or purchase another new Infinity. It was a huge success, and it was a great deal for those customers. It can be a great deal for you too, because we've got a lot of like new Infinity vehicles standing tall shining like diamonds, and looking for a new place to call home. They're still under factory warranty and come with our exclusive free lifetime powertrain warranty. Think about it. If someone has an Infinity and they're offered the opportunity to get another one, and they do, don't you think that they were really satisfied that Infinity is a great choice? You bet they did. Do yourself a favor. Go to infinityofmemphis.com and browse our used inventory. Infinity of Memphis, Germantown Road, one mile north of I-40. Instead of buying a new car, keep your current car in top shape with service from Steve's Tire and Auto. Check engine light on. Let Steve check it. Failed emissions test. Let Steve fix it. All techs are certified and trained on all of their state-of-the-art equipment. Steve's Tire and Auto repairs engines, transmissions, AC, tires, and more on import and domestic cars. And you won't have to miss work with a free shuttle service. All work is backed by a one-year nationwide warranty. Steve's Tire and Auto in Midtown and East Memphis. Call 725-1819 or 680-1998. Online at stevestireandauto.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Fish and Stats live from uh, Hoover, Alabama. SEC Media Day is underway today. Already a busy first hour. Hugh Freeze uh, dropping by a little earlier. Also, we heard from Mike Slive and his interesting comments uh, earlier today in his State of the SEC address. Uh, also visiting with uh, Ole Miss linebacker Mike Mary a little earlier. And tomorrow at 10.15, you will hear extensively from Commissioner Slav when he joins George Lapidus. <laughs> Very nice. Looking forward to that tomorrow morning. Uh, all our coverage this week brought to you by some great sponsors, FRS Power Sports, Bonnie for Life, Dilday TV, Auto Nation, GMC, and the fine folks at Cougar Chemical, you know stats, since 1970, they've been providing the Mid-South with quality automotive, industrial, commercial, and janitorial cleaning equipment, chemicals, and supplies. If you have anything you need that has to do with cleaning, 
you can go where the pros go. That would be Cougar Chemical. They're known for their award-winning service department, and they're the authorized service center for most major brands of cleaning equipment in Memphis, Nashville, and in Little Rock. And the largest inventory of pressure washers east of the Mississippi, locally owned and operated right there in Memphis by Bowl, Billy Fields and his team. Bold claim but true. Cougar Chemical builds custom detail systems, industrial trailer mount, pressure washers and reclaimed systems and offers many financing options including rent to own. You would think that it would only be open to big corporations but it's not. It's open to the public stats. Uh, so why pay retail for lesser quality products when you can buy local pay less and you get the best. Visit their showroom and enjoy wholesale prices on the highest quality professional cleaning products in the industry and just mention Sports 56 87 7 and you receive a 10% discount during SCC Media Days or visit online store at CougarChemical.com. Cougar Chemical and you. That's a winning combination. Now, will it be a winning combination in Columbia, Missouri this year? Gary Pinkle and the Missouri Tigers coming off their first losing season last year since 2004. Uh, haven't had, or I'm sorry, seven straight bowl appearances they haven't had back-to-back -back losing seasons since 2004 uh they were three and four at home last year which prior to last year under gary pinkle they were 49 and 18 in columbia missouri three and four last year they had six sec losses by an average of 19 points per game two by 21 points one by 30 one by 32 it was an experience to say the least and gary pinkle and the tigers first year in the sec I'm excited about, uh, you know, this season. Uh, you know, last year obviously was a difficult year for us. We're used to winning and uh, had some adversities we didn't overcome. And uh, so uh, our players, uh, I think, uh, have worked tremendously hard and staff has worked tremendously hard. I'm excited to see that August is, is close by and we get a chance to get back out and compete. Uh, I think we're uh, certainly um, – I understand that uh, how, how how great it is to to be in the SEC. People ask me, you know, what what did you learn from the SEC, and and what you say after your first year into it. And uh, I, I, I the SEC is what I thought it was going to be. It was a, it's a line of scrimmage league, and I knew that coming in. You know, great football teams start at their line of scrimmage. And the reason the SEC is so great is there's so many great teams in this league, and, and but certainly it's a line of scrimmage league. Offensively, defensive line, that's where it starts. I don't care what skill positions you have. Um, you got to be good up front, and so uh, I knew that going in. And certainly, uh, it's remarkably competitive. You know, we had six games that went down the last drive of the game. We won three of them, lost three. We're used to winning in the fourth quarter. But another thing you have to do is you have to you have to finish in the fourth quarter, and, and uh, we understand that in, in any sport, but certainly in this league because it's uh, it's so very very competitive. Um, a great league. We're proud to be a member of the SEC. Uh, I'm excited about it. It's very, it's remarkably competitive, and that's why I'm glad we're in it. Um, we've we've got great fans. Our fans have embraced it, and uh, they understand. Uh, they understand. I think the league. Uh, we traveled well last year as well as we've, we've ever traveled uh, in, in some of the great stadiums, and that's that was exciting for us. Uh, so uh, we're ready to get going, and uh, we're we're excited about. Uh, uh, this season coming up. Gary Pinkle, uh, a little earlier today at his uh, press conference and his opening statements uh, regarding Mizzou, uh, Gary Pinkle tied for the longest tenure of a coach in the Southeastern Conference along with Mark Richt, and he's had great success at Mizzou. And uh, but this year, stats it's it's a, it's a big one. It is a big one, and it's win or die every year now in the SEC. And he knows it, and he is very proud to be in SEC. But I think before someone like me makes a really you know snotty comment uh -oh. about yeah, but all the all that all that in the past, you weren't in the SEC. Th th don't say anything like that. He goes down to Gainesville and loses fourteen to seven with with a less than a hundred percent James Franklin all year long. You know, they barely lose to Syracuse. Syracuse. He talked about the close games he's in. Lost a heartbreaker to Vandy, uh, nine, nineteen fifteen. Gary Pinkle's got chops. He's won big there, and had him on the verge of playing for a national championship. They, they better know. They better know we can get somebody exceedingly better before we run off somebody that's been this successful. He needs a healthy quarterback. Something James Franklin was not a year ago. 
Well, last year was kind of different than any time since I've ever been coaching. I mean, I, you know, all the years I've coached, I've never really never lost a starting quarterback uh, but for a game or two uh, at all. So that was very unusual for, for us. Our last three quarterbacks uh, are playing in the NFL. And James uh, had more injuries than I think any I've ever had combined. Uh, in, in, in what he went through, uh, he missed uh, three starts and he didn't finish three other games. So he pretty much played about half the season. And, uh, and remarkably tough kid, remarkably competitive. But I really felt bad for him because, uh, you know, all these things that happened to him. Uh, the year before, he didn't, he didn't miss a game. Uh, got banged up a little bit like all quarterbacks do. But, uh, uh, you know, he's had a, he had a great spring. He's healthy now. I think he's, he's driven like we all are, you know, uh, to get back to winning. Because uh, that's what we do at Missouri. And um, uh, when we our policy, how we handle it is if you – if you're not uh, an established quarterback coming in, that we leave it, we leave it open, and we, we're leaving this open until August, uh, somewhere in the middle of August, uh, and we'll make a final decision. But coming out of spring, he had a good spring, and he's the starter. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, I think our skilled positions, uh, our so-called skilled positions on offense, the guys that touch the football, are probably the best group that we've had: uh, running back, receivers, tight ends, since uh, 2007, 2008 and as a collection of players. And the, the most important thing in our offense is a quarterback's got to distribute the football. That's what they do. And so, uh, you know, your quarterback has to produce in this offense, and, and, uh, and that's what we expect to get done, and that's what we have to do. James Franklin, uh, that quarterback he's talking about, he will enter this year as the Tigers' starting quarterback in his third year injured all of last year. 2011, he had 2,865 passing yards to go along with 981 rushing yards, and he does start as a starting quarterback, at least going into camp. He'll be opposed by sophomore Corbin, Corbin Burkstresser, who started some games last year when Franklin was injured, and also redshirt freshman Matty Monk uh, is going to be another one that could push him for some time. But uh, the Missouri Tigers coming off uh, that well non-bowl appearance last year for the first time in eight years. And looking to avoid back-to-back losing seasons for the first time since 2004. We will talk a little more about Gary Pinkle and that hot seat that he may be, well, he is on going into the upcoming season. We'll get into that, and we'll also uh, we'll get into a bunch of topics with Brian Burwell from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. will join us next here on Fish and Stats. We are live from SEC Media Days. Our coverage brought to you by AutoNation GMC, Cougar Chemical, Dilday TV, Body for Life, and FRS Power Sports. We will be here until 6 o'clock here this afternoon. We still will hear from Phil Savage will join us, analyst for the Crimson Tide. Also, Will Muschamp, head coach of the Florida Gators. We'll hear more from the commissioner of the SEC, Mike Slive, and we'll talk some baseball later in the show with Dave Chase. Fish and Stats return to SEC Media Days and Radio Row next on Sports 56. Solutions. I'm Brian Elder. Are you getting three estimates to replace your roof? Go ahead and set your appointments with the other two guys and call me. I'm going to measure your roof from outer space and give you a quote right over the phone. 867-0303. Let me introduce you to a beautiful standing seam metal roof. The last roof you'll ever have to buy. They last forever, increase the value of your home, and they're not as expensive as you may think. Let me see your current roof. I may be able to get your insurance company to behave themselves and pay for a brand new roof. Don't let them tell you it has to be replaced. I may be able to repair it and save you thousands. 867-0303. Commercial flat roofs. TPO rubberized flat roofs that will outlive your grandkids. 867-0303. 867-0303 for brianelderroofing.com. Call 867-0303. Tunica National's three-person scramble is here, and I'll be out there swinging the sticks, and so should you. Call Tunica National at 866-833-6331 before each and every Thursday at 530 and enter your team. Here's why. 30 bucks gets you nine holes with a cart, a chance to win great prizes from Tunica National and the Gold Strike Casino for the closest to the pin, and a free dinner buffet after play. This year, each week's winning team of any flight qualifies for the Tournament of Champions at the end of the year with an after party at the Gold Strike Casino. Tunica National's three-person scramble in the TOC, sponsored by the Gold Strike Casino, is is back. Hi, welcome to FedEx. How can I help you? Tell me something. Do you ship China? China? Sure. FedEx offers time definite delivery, typically in one, two, or three business days, to or from more than 220 countries and territories worldwide, including China. 
We even offer help with customs paperwork. No, I mean, do you ship China? You know, like fancy plates and stuff. Oh, of course we ship China. Where do you want it shipped? Beijing. You do ship to China, don't you? International Shipping Solutions. FedEx. Solutions that matter. Go to fedex.com slash solutions that matter. There's no better time to come by Germantown Hardware and Paint to get yourself ready for another summer in the Mid-South. Germantown Hardware and Paint stocks the largest supply of Weber grills and accessories in the Mid-South. And now has added Holland grills to their extensive inventory. If you're looking for paint or stain, then look no further. Germantown Hardware and Paint has a complete line of Benjamin Moore paints. Why battle long lines and inexperienced staff at large commercial stores when you can get what you want right around the corner? With a promise of service and convenience, Justin and his staff are knowledgeable, friendly, and committed to make sure you are taken care of. Looking to get your yard looking better than ever? With brand names such as Toro, Echo, Steel, and Honda, whether it's chainsaws, lawnmowers, or blowers, Germantown Hardware and Paint has everything you need to get the job done right. If you need it, Germantown Hardware and Paint has it. Conveniently located at the corner of Poplar and Germantown Parkway, it's Germantown Hardware and Paint, the only real hardware store in the Mid-South. The voice of a fan. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis. Fan 87.7 FM WPGFLP Memphis. A Flynn Broadcasting Station. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It's 4 o'clock. I'm Bash. Last night's home run derby gave us plenty of entertainment, and hopefully the All-Star Game will do the same thing tonight. 7 o'clock Central Time will be the first pitch on ESPN. The National League All-Stars take on the American League. Matt Harvey will tow the rubber for the mound. With a thick mound for the National League team, Max Scherzer will get the start for the American League side. Major League Baseball says it's moving ahead with a plan to expand instant replay for umpire calls next season. And MLB Executive Vice President Joe Torre said, we're pretty confident we'll have something in place in 2014. Video review has been in place for home run calls since 2008. Bud Selig initially wanted to add trap plays and fair and foul calls down the line for this season, but changes were put off for more radical options to be examined. In other Major League Baseball news, the Baseball Players Association says any suspensions resulting from the sport's latest drug investigation likely won't be served until next year if the discipline is challenged before an arbitrator. Obviously, you know it's SEC Media Days down in Hoover, Alabama. We've got you covered all week long right here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Fish and Stats broadcast live, as well as Greg Gaston and Keith Parker. They'll be down there getting all the audio they can. As far as some NBA notes, the Memphis Grizzlies we got another summer league game tonight after losing two over the weekend. 7.30 tonight on NBA TV. Your Grizzlies will take on the Phoenix Suns. Some other news out of the NBA. The Miami Heat and Ford Mike Miller's agent, but they're using the amnesty clause on Miller. The sports report's brought to you by Amerigo. Visit Amerigo for casual, energetic, affordable Italian dining, offering fresh Italian cuisine, open daily for lunch and dinner at 1239 Ridgeway Road. Make your reservations online at Amerigo.net or call 761-4000. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Fish and Stats, hour number two on this Tuesday afternoon, the first day of SEC Media Days in Hoover, Alabama, here at the Winfrey Hotel. We thank our sponsors, AutoNation GMC, Cougar Chemical, FRS Power Sports, Body for Life, and Dilday TV. Coming up later this hour, we are going to... Here from Florida head coach Will Muschamp talking about uh, the questions on his offense. Also Phil Savage, analyst for the Crimson Tide of Alabama, will join us. Also with Sirius XM Radio and the executive director of the Senior Bowl. Ross Bjork will join us next hour. We'll hear more from Mike Slive. And we'll talk a little baseball as we do each week with Dave Chase. Right now, it's a pleasure to welcome to the program from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, here covering the Missouri Tigers, Brian Burwell. Hello, Brian. What's going on, Mr. Fisher? It's great <laughs> to see you again. Well, I'm... You too. Now, see, I want to make this clear to your to your listeners, though, because, see, Fish likes to go around bragging that he knows people and that they're friends <laughs> and stuff like this. So I before do. we get yeah. started with this, hey, this is my buddy. We go way back. The only reason I'm doing this radio <laughs> appearance here is because I had demands. I needed a fluffy pillow and <laughs> and and a nice, tall, warm glass of cognac, and you took care of me. Yeah, and that's the only that's what I do. I, that's the only reason because I, I I don't like you. That apartment <laughs> that you gave me, yeah, it I did. stunk. Passed it off to it did. Stunk. did it? Well, the, the restaurants downstairs, <laughs> yeah. you think they'd smell good? They don't. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> well, Brian and I, I warned our I, I told him and let our audience know that I was going to let you know, and I want you to take it back to St. Louis. He's very anti-St. Louis now. 
He doesn't, oh, he, doesn't, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want y'all getting the SEC basketball well, that's tournament. True. Yeah. He doesn't want media days coming there. Doesn't that's want the also foot, true. Football championship game coming no there. Does. And I do because I think when you bring somebody in to your group, you give them stuff in return just Thank like you. Our Arkansas mostly got the basketball tournament in Memphis. Still don't know what we gave to South Carolina, but we'll come up with something. Right. But Missouri and A&M, you, you're going to let them in the club? Let them in the club. Thank you. And, I, and and that's what I like about Mike Slide because he feels that way. See, that's the way the Big 12 operates, that, that, the fishes way. <laughs> All right? Well, maybe growing so, up, you, 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 bring, you, you, you just want y'all, you guys today. paying dues, not yeah. being a member. Well, that's yeah. true, yeah. You know, unless you're f- from Texas, uh, the SC, I mean, the Big 12 go, yeah, I'm not going to do anything for you. You come into the SEC, and, and what does what does the SEC do for Mizzou? They give them the first home game, the first game in the league at home. Okay, the bad news is they gave them Georgia, <laughs> right? You know, but, but it was entertaining for a while. Yeah, it was entertaining for a while. And and the worst news is the crowd start started chanting "Old Man Football." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, we're uh, going we're, we're to get the. Uh, we're going to get the SEC basketball. We're, it's not going to. We're going to. Well, I don't like it. it mainly because Memphis should have gotten it. Why? Because Memphis is in the heart of the Southeastern Conference. St. Louis is not Me- Southeastern Conference. We should get and, it. And that's why I asked you earlier but, but, you about know, how the going... SEC is coming. And two people from the Post Dispatch here covering yep. SEC media days, and that's great to hear. But I, I, I don't get a. I just don't get that sense of excitement about. The Southeastern Conference, like I do in Memphis, not even close. We well, gotta build it. Got to, That's right. Sure, see, but Memphis now, has he, built it and keeps getting overlooked for the but, tournament. But no, you get, you get your. Chance. Oh, I don't know if we will. Well, not at our, not at our expense, hopefully. But, <laughs> but no, you've got a lot. You've got a lot of appealing things. You got a nice building. Great building. You, you, you have a nice place, a, a nice entertainment area. Yep, that's really good. Uh, you know, so I don't see why not. And it's SEC country, but we got to we got to make but, the footprint bigger. We've got to yeah. get into we got to get into Kansas City. Yeah, but do that in three years, four years. Well, that's about when it's going to be. There. Right, it'll be it'll five be St. Louis first because St. Louis has has shown that they know how to how to th- throw a party. basketball sure. parties. Mm-hmm. All right, we've had the Final Four there. We have the, the Missouri Valley Conference there every year. Uh, it's not, it's not a bad deal. They've seen how it works. That we have the building. We can go small, and we we, we can go medium, and go to the to the uh, to a twenty thousand seat arena, or we can get grandiose and go into a dome. Right. So, do you feel like the since Mizzou now has joined the SEC, is it making a bigger imprint in St. Louis? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I I think that they embraced it rather quickly. Um, and they were prepared for the worst and hoping for the best, and they kind of got it right in the middle. Uh, and but one of the things that I've already I've I've known I've noticed already with with Missouri uh, at least football fans is they've already embraced the uh, the fanaticism of the SEC because Gary Pinkle is the most successful coach in the in the program's history, and he had a bad season and they want to fire him. You know, so that's that's. That's SEC, right? Well, Brian, I, I saw Arkansas do it. Poor Jack Crow never even got he never even got to the starting line in his the Arkansas's first year in the league. And then even though Danny Ford got Arkansas to Atlanta, that wasn't enough. That, that, that it took them a while to to acclimate themselves, and it, it's a it's a learning process. Yeah. Now I, I do notice there are no uh, St. Louis or Kansas City or Columbia sports talk radio. It was here last on, year on, on Radio Row. So. I think that's something that, that that has to get picked up, and uh, and maybe that'll happen in the future. But I, I do think that everybody in Missouri and everybody in St. Louis is looking at Gary Pinkle and going, "Okay, Gary, what are you going to do? We cannot have another five and seven. We cannot have another season, two seasons in a row with no with no bowl game." And Gary, I think Gary loves this. Gary likes when. You know when he's pushed up against the wall, and and people say he can't do stuff. That's when he does stuff. Uh, and he even talked about it today. He goes, you know what? This is not the first time I've had a rough year. I do know what what I'm doing. I know how to bounce back. What was the line? I'm paid to. That's what I'm paid to to solve problems. So this is a problem. Let's see if he can solve it. Stats brought it up earlier uh, uh, about Gary Pinkle. 
and, and you just mentioned, you know, winning as coach Mizzou's had. And they've had great success. I think they were really close to getting to a national title not yeah. that long ago. Uh, that first year, last year, was was difficult. But he made the point that you have to be careful. If you're going to put him on the hot seat and you're going to go ahead and make a change, you better have a really good idea that you're going to get somebody better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because I've always compared Gary Pinkle and the way he does business to um, a guy like, uh, what's the guy at Virginia Tech? Uh, Frank Bamer. Bamer. Yeah, Bamer. An acquired taste. Yes. And a guy who will have a three-year run where there are 10, 11, 12 victories, and then it'll drop down to 7, 8, and 9. And then when the when that that freshman really good freshman recruiting class grows, then they get back on that streak again. And I think we've just experienced the dip. And now let's see if he starts climbing back. But he has to do a better job of recruiting the interior line. That's the whole key to everything. He has to do a better job of that. I'll give you guys a place, and it was a lot of the reasons that just on the field, but Colorado. They had to get yeah. rid of Gary Barnett, and been the same since. Yeah, and then they and they pull the trigger on a guy after one year, right? So you know, if you're going to, if you have an appetite for change, you know, and it's always, and and we know this in talk radio, the easiest way to stop uh, a ridiculous caller in their tracks when they when they start talking about this has to be done and this we got to do this we got to do this and then you just ask them why. Right, and then all of a sudden you get oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, because you don't know why. It's easy to say, change it. It's a lot harder to tell me with whom? change it with whom right. and why. Right, you know, and I love change. I think change is good most of the time, but you've got to tell me when you've had a guy who has taken your program and elevated it to a com- very highly competitive level. Okay, he hasn't gotten you to the promised land yet. But who are you going to get better? If you can tell me who you're going to get better, then I'm with you. But if you can't, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. <laughs> <laughs> and Gary Pinkle is with James Franklin uh, yes. as his quarterback. And last year was you know injury filled, and I guess a little controversy on you know Franklin whether they could shoot him up uh, yeah. a little bit and get him back and. You know, I think SEC fans looked at it and said, "Oh, come on! This, is, you know, if you want to play in the SEC, you got you got to play hurt. You got to man up, son." And yeah, but that, that's not their kid. What? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. What? 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 What's come out of that? What do you expect from Franklin this year? And you know, what came through that with that sort of attitude? I guess last well, year. Well, I, I think two things. I think it spoke to a the sort of person, the sort of of intelligent young man he is and the sort of parents that he has who just put the brakes on everything and said, no, uh-uh, we don't do that. We don't do that because this is a, you know, that needle is a short-term solution that creates a long-term issue. Let's think about life at 40. Yeah. And you know what? I was not a great football player. I played football in high school, and I was an idiot. I was the guy who, yeah, I, I, put me in, coach. I'm, I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, fine. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. You know, and I wasn't. I have two bad knees, and I played when I shouldn't have played because I wanted to play. And I was like, no, coach, I'm fine. He comes, no. I said, no, coach, I'm fine. I'm fine. Lying through my teeth, which is what most athletes do because right. you want to play. Well, you know what? My knees wake up about 35 or 40 minutes after I do now. All right, and I'm in my in my mid 50s. And they're better weather. The, they're better than the Weather Channel on predicting weather. Absolutely. <laughs> but if I'm but if I'm a head coach in the Southeastern Conference, I need a quarterback who is going to play hurt. I need a quarterback who's going to play through pain and not worry about uh, when he's 40. No, if I I'm need, going to win, because my job depends on. I it. need a quarterback who's going to play through pain. I don't need a quarterback who's going to play when he's hurt. And there's a difference. And there's a huge sure. difference. And I think um, that now they understand that. But I think the other thing is, you know, he wouldn't have been hurt if that offensive line had been blocking for him. Right. All right? If and, they weren't so hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that was that's an uh, issue that they're addressing. And I think you're going to see a different sort of offense as well. Uh, it's going to be a spread offense. But, you know, they're playing it very close to their vest about what we're going to see. They're basically telling us, yeah, we've made some 
we're going to make some tweaks to our offense. Buy a ticket if you want to see what it is. <laughs> is right. there a is there a win number he has to get to? Uh, yeah, to me, I would certainly expect seven. Because you, if you go four and zero in the in the in your non conference schedule, you can you, can we we can at least get three out of at once we get in the conference, can't we? You know that would help. Right. Give me give me at least three. Those four and are important. Auto Zone Liberty Bowl New Year's Eve with there Brian. There you go. And, and those four to start the season are critical. Yeah. Murray really State, is. Toledo at Indiana, Arkansas State. Yeah. And Toughest one's Arkansas State. Yeah, I think that's that's the game, and I don't think it's a trap game because. Everybody knows what Arkansas State has done. Yeah. So. Uh, James Franklin, by the way, uh, just tweeted out by our good friend Russ Mitchell from collegefootballnews.com. James Franklin was asked which SEC program had the rudest fan base. Um, he said Mizzou. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's that going to go over? Oh, I think they. everybody knows he's being funny. <laughs> he uh, said, yeah. heard some uh, not-so-nice comments from my own fans last year. Yeah, well, of course he did because those are the fanatics – who were mad because they didn't understand why, you know, rub some dirt on it and get back out there. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Shut up. <laughs> That's the, pretty much the column I wrote after, you know, he didn't play. And I would say anybody that had, here's my, the, two words of advice for you, who those, those of you who think he should have just gone back in there. Shut up. Right. Because that's, that's idiotic. Particularly when, if you've been actually paying attention, looking on TV, reading newspapers, understanding that football players in their 40s, 50s, and 60s are committing suicide. You know, guys who have so much pain because of the mistakes, the rub, rub some dirt on it, go back in and play attitude. Right. You know, if you know that, why in the heck would you be upset at a young man who had the intelligence to go, no, no, thank you. No needles because I actually want to feel when I'm hurt, all right? And, and Brian, Bill Curry talks about the concussion protocol that Vince Lombardi would put the Packers through if your bell had been rung. If you if you, you thought, thought you were out but you were still standing, the protocol was to have Ray Nitsky come up and forearm you in the side of the head. <laughs> <laughs> and if you survive that, you're good to go. Go back in, son. <laughs> of course. Uh, Brian, uh, Brian Burwell with the St. Louis Post-Dispatch uh, talking a little Mizzou. Uh, switching gears from basketball for a minute. Uh, the Memphis Tigers picking up Michael Dixon, uh, former Missouri Tiger. And Memphis is pretty loaded in the backcourt. And they pick up Dixon, who certainly is a talent uh, going into last season. Second team All-American type of player. Uh, we know we got a great player uh, in Michael Dixon. Well, what do you think we can expect from Michael Dixon now, Memphis Tiger? Well, I'm, I was a huge fan of Michael Dixon's. I, I loved – he's one of those guys that a, a, a former uh, NBA coach told me and it, it fits him perfectly. You can't fool him because he ain't paying attention. You know, <laughs> <laughs> He's one of those guys, just get him, let him out there, yep. let him go play. Just let him go play. And and he you know and but yeah and when he was at Mizzou he was surrounded by a lot of veterans a lot of a lot of strong leadership guys and they kept him calm they they were able to in those moments where he may go off the range a little bit offensively they were able to draw him back in and go hey hey we don't want you to stop shooting but we don't want you to take that shot he's had a he's had a couple years of maturity now and you're getting a you're you're probably getting a far more mature guy. Who understands probably has a much better under, uh, understanding of the mistakes he made uh, off the court. Uh, I hope he has, because I don't know that guy. The guy who who they're talking about, who made the who the, you know the accusations about, <clears throat> you know, basically you know being a sexual predator. I guess is the, for lack of a better term. I don't know that kid. He never. I never saw that guy, uh, and I'm not really sure. Whether that's that, whether that's an accurate portrayal of the guy. No charges. No charges were brought, but people were afraid. People were afraid to keep him around because they were afraid that there would be another explosion. Right. That there would be somebody else who was going to come up and say something. Well, no one did come up. Uh, but I hope for his sake that whatever happened, whatever it was, that he takes 
takes a little uh, retrospection and looks at what it was that got him into this situation and says, you know what, I need to learn from this because, I, you know, let it's a difficult subject to talk about because you don't want to say something that's going to get you in trouble, right? But I, I, I do believe that when it comes to, to, to athletes, celebrity athletes, whether you're the celebrity on big man on campus or whether you're a, you know, multi-millionaire, gentlemen, there are enough women that want to. <laughs> Why in the world are you going to try to force yourself on somebody? If that's the only thing this young man learns, thank goodness for that. But I'm I'm hopeful that he learns a whole lot more than that. What do you uh, What do you hope Johnny Manziel has learned in the last seventy two hours when we hear from him tomorrow? I don't know. Look, and this goes back. This this incorporates into the conversation we just had about Michael Dixon. When you're twenty years old, when you're eighteen, you're nineteen, you're twenty, you're twenty one. Hey. You make mistakes. I made mistakes. Whoppers. Big ones. I've made mistakes, but, you know, I wasn't a high-profile athlete, and my mistakes never showed up on, on Twitter. ESPN or on Twitter. <laughs> right. But you know what? I learned from my mistakes. And when I made the big ones where I went, oh, gee, I can't believe I – wow. Ooh, did I get lucky that time? Let me – I didn't do that again. Right. <laughs> I didn't make that mistake again. That's – what these two young men have to learn from what the experiences they've had over the course of the last couple of years. Brian, we saw it with someone I think all three of us have a lot of admiration for in Tony La Russa, a fully older, grown man yeah. approaching six, maybe even 60. The DWI at spring training really scarred him. Yeah. But he learned from it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And I think – be, what else he learned was to be far more protective of the young men who he was in charge of, you know, grown men. And it's kind of hard to, you know, and, and then when you start seeing the loss of life that the, the Cardinals experienced because of, of, of Josh drunk, and, yeah, dr drunk and driving, mm -hmm. that's, that really emotionally sobers you up because you realize these are mistakes. And that's the kind of thing that I hope, that Johnny Manziel wakes up and, and figures out. Because, you know, dude, if the worst thing in your life at Texas A&M is that you got a parking ticket, you know. You're ahead of the game. Yeah, you know, Seriously? The, yeah. Man, the Manziels or someone at A&M, Kevin Sumlin, they should reach out to a phone call, a conversation, a visit with TLR. Something. He, he loves other fun. sports, too. Yeah. He loves sportsmen. Yeah. yeah. But, no, you know what? There are enough people. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming there are enough intelligent people in that, org in that program, solid leaders, who can sit down with him and, and make him understand. You know what, dude? Okay, just we're not talking about us. Let's just talk about you. <sighs> you want to go in the – what round do you want to go in? How much money do you want to make? Because you know what, if you get branded as like a, as a serial, you know, unrepentant knucklehead, you whatever round you were going in, first, second, third, well, just add five, six. Get more familiar with like, like the numbers of your station. Get familiar with five and six. All right, get, get familiar with that round. I mean, Chris Martinson last night said after this, he said. He might have to come back another year. Yeah, it's like, all, really? Yeah. I mean, I know what he did was, it was, it was bad, but already NFL really would take that into that much consideration. The, if nothing happened from here on out, yeah, really, they would still go back for that. Ryan? Do Do you want to make sure when you're investing in a quarterback, you want to make sure you don't want a patchwork? Hey, hey, hey! I'm I'm okay now. I'm okay. And then, then you look behind, and it's nothing but a facade. You want to see, and you want to see some sort of longer pattern of behavior to make sure that you got a guy who's behaving the right way. Yeah. You really do. And I, so, oh man, I hope this kid wakes up. He's getting ready to. 
blow a lot of money. And oh, by the way, how about endorsements? Yeah, and well, and tomorrow I think it's great that he's coming because he's going to have to answer it. Tomorrow. Yeah, and, del- and he's got to be honest tomorrow. I'm delighted that they they didn't do the old uh, protection. Still you know? dehydrated. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna send him out to the ESPYS though, because the air is a lot better there. Yeah. Please. <laughs> did anybody? Did anybody out there with even half a brain when they heard? Oh, he got he he was dehydrated. Did anybody say? Boy, I bet he was out really working hard. And just didn't didn't uh, didn't do enough. <laughs> First, uh, well, I think the first thing a lot of people thought of was, well, wait a second, the Mannings endorsed Gatorade. they got plenty, I'm yeah. sure, on you site. You can swim in it and tip it up. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think anybody thought that was the problem, that he yeah. wasn't going to the Gatorade bin. No, not so no. much. No. Brian Burwell, man, great to catch up with you. you thanks, uh, thanks Thank for you. coming on. Good All to right, see you. My pleasure. All right. Well, look, I'm going to invite one of you guys or both of you guys on because I'm getting ready to do a new radio show in uh, in St. Louis. Anytime, anytime. Fantastic. Whenever, whenever. Yeah. You know, if you uh, just don't tell people about uh, how I don't think the SEC tournament should be in St. Louis. Oh, that's the <laughs> main reason I'm bringing your butt on. <laughs> that guy's his child in St. Louis. Yeah. Oh, Make sure you gotta go there back now. in St. Louis know that you are a traitor now. He's not one of no, us No, that's anymore. not you. Thanks, Brian. Right, thanks, man. Uh, Brian Burwell joining us from the uh, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Uh, we want to thank uh, our sponsors uh, for making it possible for us to be here uh, this week. FRS Power Sports also. Body for Life. Have you noticed a decrease in energy level recently? Are you more fatigued during the day or lacking the interest of your favorite hobby, hobbies or a decrease in sexual interests? Have you gained more belly weight or noticed increasing mood changes? Those are all symptoms of low testosterone. Yes, to a couple of those. We, I'm not going to tell you which one. <laughs> well, you might want to get checked. Uh, it's all treatable with uh, one visit at Body for Life. That's all you need to do. Set up an appointment with Body for Life today. 901-373-3300. 901-373-3300. Body for Life located across the street from Wolf Chase Nissan. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Or give them a call, 373-3300. Also, thanks to Dill Day TV, the good folks at Cougar Chemical, and AutoNation GMC. Coming up, we are going to visit uh, with Phil Savage coming up in our next segment. He's a busy man. He's the analyst for the Crimson Tide. He's seen a few victories here lately. Also, a Sirius XM radio host, executive director of the Senior Bowl as well. And he's great shortstop by the Suwannee Tigers and quarterback. That's what I've heard. I've heard. I've heard. Uh, we've talked about that a few times. He's, he's a very baseball familiar. guy. Also, uh, we will hear from Will Muschamp, the head coach of the Florida Gators, before this hour is up. Next hour, we'll talk a little baseball with Dave Chase. Tonight is the All-Star Game in New York at... City Field, right? City Field? No. Games that what we're calling it? One, two, six, and seven in St. Louis. Depend on tonight. <laughs> That's right. It matters. We will take a break. We'll come back. Also, still ahead, our sleep cheap big number of the day, and we'll hear more from Mike Slive. Keep it right here. Fish and Stats live from Radio Row, SEC Media Days in Hoover, Alabama, here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Have you downloaded the Sports 56 WHBQ app yet? Get it today on iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry. Free. Only from Sports 56 WHBQ. The name has changed, and so have the deals. AutoNation GMC Mendenhall is lighting up the market with incredible lease specials. For example, a 2013 Terrain for $199 a month for 39 months, and the 2013 Acadias for $299 a month for 39 months. And don't forget the summer sell-down on all 2013 Sierras. Discounts up to $10,000 off MSRP while they last. So hurry over to AutoNation GMC Mendenhall for all your GMC needs. Have you noticed a decrease in energy level recently? Are you more fatigued during the day or lacking interest in your favorite hobbies? Do you feel a decrease in sexual interest? Have you gained more belly weight or noticed increasing mood changes? These are all symptoms of low testosterone, which is treatable with a visit at Body for Life. You'll receive a comprehensive evaluation, including total testosterone levels to verify your need for testosterone replacement therapy, as well as a blood test to monitor your prostate health. In addition to testosterone replacement therapy, Body for 
for Life also administers monthly B12 injections, lipo weight loss injections, and HCG diet. Even if you're not sure whether your testosterone is low, but think it might be, you've got nothing to lose because your first test at Body for Life, which will reveal testosterone level, is absolutely free. Set up your appointment with Body for Life today, 373-3300. Body for Life is located right across the street from Wolf Chase Nissan, and it's open Monday through Friday, 8 to 6, and on Saturday, 9 to 1. 373-3300, Body for Life. Hey, new kid, you need to know something about me. I love Honeywell products. No matter what the job, they've got safety covered. Granger is where we get it, with names you know and trust. UVEC safety glasses, Howard Light hearing protection, North Respiratory, Miller Fall Systems, love them. Honeywell, recommended for safety, trusted by me. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. You wouldn't let your child set off fireworks outside, but when's the last time you thought about fire safety inside? As a parent, you want to provide the safest environment for your children. Kidda's new worry-free smoke and carbon monoxide alarms will help eliminate your home safety concerns. The sealed-in lithium battery offers protection for 10 years. Never hear a low battery chirp again. Plus, each is designed to help you choose the right alarm for the right location. Buy Kidda's worry-free alarms today at the Home Depot. Jim's Place is a family-owned and operated restaurant serving Memphis since 1921. Famous for its steaks, Jim's has something for everyone including seafood and Greek specialties reflecting the owner's heritage. Father and son owners Costa and Bill Terrace are committed to providing the best in food and service to you. And our new love is catering. Now in a beautiful new location, Popper and Perkins, and online at jimsplacememphis.com. 901-766-2030. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It's 4.30. I'm Bash. Last night's home run derby gave us plenty of sparks and entertainment. Hopefully the All-Star game can do the same tonight. It's 7 o'clock Central Time, first pitch. Of course, you can catch it on ESPN as the National League All-Stars take on the American League. Matt Harvey will tow the rubber. For the National League side, Max Scherzer from the Detroit Lions will start for the American League. Major League Baseball also had some news come out today. It's moving ahead with plans to expand instant replay for umpire calls next season. It's about time, I'd say. Major League Baseball Executive Vice President Joe Torre said, we're pretty confident we'll have it in place for 2014. In other baseball news, Baseball Players Association says any suspensions resulting from the sport's latest drug investigation likely won't be served until next season if the discipline is challenged before an arbitrator. As far as some base basketball news goes for you, after losing their first two NBA Summer League games over the weekend, Memphis Grizzlies are back at it tonight as they'll take on the Phoenix Suns. That game will start at 7.30 Central Time on NBA TV if you want to check that one out. In other NBA news, the Miami Heat informed Mike Miller's agent last night that they will use their amnesty clause on Miller. Nick's guard and sixth man of the year, J.R. Smith, underwent knee surgery. He'll be out three to four weeks, or three to four months. In SEC media days, it's going on down in Hoover. Of course, we'll have all the coverage right here for you on Sports 56, WHBQ and 87.7 FM. Plenty of guests and plenty of audio that we'll have all throughout the week. Sports reports brought to you by Dixie Pickers, located at 99 North Center Street in Collierville and open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 5. Dixie Pickers should be your one-stop shop for fine southern apparel and classic sports memorabilia. Visit them online at DixiePickerStore.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Fish and Stats with you on this Tuesday afternoon, the first day of SEC Media Days, live in Hoover, Alabama, here at the Winfrey uh, Hotel. We'll be here through uh, Thursday, thanks to our fine sponsors of our S-Powered Sports, Body for Life, Dilday TV, Cougar Chemical, and Auto Nation GMC. We thank Mike Mary, Hugh Freeze, who joined us in our first hour. We also heard from Gary Pinkle in hour number one. Brian Burwell uh, joined us. Uh, in our last segment, always great to catch up with uh, Brian. We'll still hear from Will Muschamp, the head coach of the Gators. We'll hear more from Mike Sly. Ross Bjork's going to stop by, and we'll talk a little baseball with Dave Chase, the commissioner of the Prospect League. Talk a little all-star game with Dave a little later in the show. Right now, it's a pleasure to welcome to the program. He's the analyst for the Crimson Tide of Alabama, Sirius XM Radio, executive director of the Senior Bowl, going to be doing some ESPN, NFL, insider stuff. I got it all, right? Phil? That covers all three bases and home plate. So. Phil Savage with us. How are you, sir? I'm good. Good to be back with you guys. Hard to believe a, a, an entire year has already passed. And it was 10 minutes ago. Back in Hoover. Yeah. He goes quickly, doesn't he? 
It really does. These last few weeks have just flown by. That's kind of our downtime for Senior Bowl. And, of course, during our entire break, I'm flipping through the magazines, reading about these teams and getting ready for SEC Media Days and Mountain West Media Day and Big Ten Media and American, the league formerly known mm -hmm. as the Big East Conference. So a, a busy next three weeks for, for us in Mobile. And what's crazy, you do all that reading, Phil. Last year did all that reading and had no idea the Heisman Trophy winner was actually even going to start uh, for Texas A&M at this time a year ago. And, and really, no, Cam Newton wasn't on anybody's Heisman radar just a few years ago. So we think we know it all this week. But Mark Ring, Ingram wasn't on many. Yeah, but we're about to find out a lot more, aren't we? Yeah, we are. And, of course, there's always surprises. And last year, I would include myself in the group that thought Missouri might have the easier transition to the SEC, more so than A&M. The complete opposite happened. Mizzou got beat up. If within the first four or five weeks of the season, they go five and seven, A and M goes eleven and two, and here we are a year later in Johnny Football's the story, probably for all the wrong reasons coming into SEC Media Days, but nevertheless, he will be on the field August thirty first and for the rest of the year. And that really is the bottom line when it gets right down to it. Everything else we're doing is just talk. We talked to Brian Burwell about Johnny Manziel and what we expect tomorrow to hear from him and what he needs to say and, you know, how it, it hurt him a bit over the weekend with the Manning camp. With, with the Senior Bowl, how much time do you spend with the future for these guys and what they, you know, have coming their way and, and how they need to act? Is that is that a part of that week? Well, of course, when they arrive on the weekend before Sunday night, we have a good meeting with them and basically lay out that this is going to be as close to an NFL week as you can experience prior to you getting drafted uh, to your regular club. In other words, we're going to try to make, and make you see and realize the importance of the meetings in the classroom, on the field, the performance on game day, and then, of course, the off-the-field service to the community and we do all those things so that they can get a flavor and a taste of what NFL like life is going to be like for them uh, as far as Johnny Manziel goes you know obviously it's a misstep when you sleep through meetings or miss practices or whatever the case might be I think everyone's hope is that at 20 years of age and a freshman Heisman Trophy winner that this might be lesson learned let's go forward from here now, if he continues to do some of the things, they're all trivial. Absolutely. He's not really breaking any laws, although yesterday's uh, guilty plea to misdemeanor. And as I said on Sirius earlier today, you know, some people are trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. But if you have enough molehills, they can become a mountain. And I do think that people in the NFL are watching with a curious eye, not necessarily anticipating that he's coming out this year, but I do think Regardless of how he answers the questions tomorrow, he's going to face the same questions when he comes to the NFL, whether it's next spring or the spring after that, because people are going to want to know for themselves. They want to, they're going to want to hear it face to face. Hey, why did you do what you did in Thibodeau with the Mannings? What really went down in terms of that situation? And right. he's going to have to address it. And, you know, if you're an owner or a general manager and you're getting ready to, to make a guy, uh, the face of your franchise, which essentially the quarterback is, you know, you want somebody with a pretty good track record that's going to be able to hold up and withstand the the lifestyle that those quarterbacks lead. And so far right now, you would say that he hasn't passed that test. Hopefully he'll get better at it as time goes along. And tomorrow could be a great first step towards doing that. He has plenty of time. One youngster that's upstairs right now, he's at, on this property right now that's, NFL ready, we think, in every facet is Jadavion Clowney. Would, if you were running a team, would you want to be the first pick and have a shot at Jadavion Clowney for the next 10 years? Well, based on what I've seen, I've only watched really a couple of games of him in terms of really looking at the tape. And, of course, he won't be eligible for the Senior Bowl because he's only a third-year junior. Last year we got the exception to take fourth-year juniors who were graduating in December so he's not on our list but I have watched him out of curiosity and you know he's a classic 4-3 defensive end get after the passer he probably could do some things in the 3-4 in terms of his athletic ability but why on earth would a team want to do anything with him other than 
rush up field and go get the quarterback. Uh, I think if he can stay relatively injury free and have some production uh, like he's had these first two years, then he's certainly going to be a major consideration. Part of it will be dictated by who's picking first because if they don't have a quarterback, then that makes it a little bit of a different scenario. If they do have a quarterback, then he's going to be an easy card to turn in next spring, likely as the first pick overall. Phil, the team uh, that you have watched a lot, uh, the Crimson Tide, uh, national championship season, they lose a lot of guys. They lose a lot of guys every single year, and it just seems like they keep reloading. We're expecting now Alabama to have the potential to run the table every single season. I think they have that potential again this year to do it. What would be the biggest question marks uh, going into camp? Well, you know, you say they run the table. You know, people forget they've, they've been actually <laughs> lost a game in each of the last two years at home, right. at home and won the national championship. Uh, are they beatable? Absolutely, when they turn the ball over. If Bama doesn't turn the ball over and Bama doesn't sustain any key injuries, then they've got a great chance to go do it again. We're going to know within the first three weeks of the season. Of course, they open with Virginia Tech, have a bye, and then go to A&M. I think we're going to know more about this team uh, than we did a year ago after the first two ball games. Uh, again, like last year, a major theme was keeping A.J. McCarron upright. They've got to do it again because even though there's a long list of backup quarterbacks, I'm not sure which one would be able to carry the mail, so to speak, for any length of time. I don't know that the coaching staff really knows that. But if they keep their frontline players healthy, in terms of Amari Cooper, T.J. Yeldon, A.J. McCarron, Ha Ha Clinton Dix, C.J. Mosley. They're going to be ready to go because they simply have more than everybody else. Plus, they're extremely well coached. And like I said at the very beginning, they just don't turn the ball over. And they're a tough out. Even when they have to punt, they're making you drive at 70 or 80 yards. That's a very difficult task and, to do three or four times in one game. And Cody Mandel does a good job when they have to punt. I had a person close to the Alabama football program tell me, because there's going to be a lot of new names. You know, Barrett Jones is gone. DJ Fluker is gone. A lot of the familiar names, they're gone. You know, Trent a few years ago, Julio a few years ago. But one thing you need to remember about all these new names is who recruited them. Right, and the man that does recruit him also evaluates him, and he's had a pretty good track record pretty good. over the last few years. But, you know, you look at some players that could potentially break out this year. Uh, you look at Jeffrey Pagan on the defensive line. I think he's got immense talent. We'll see if he can apply it to the game field. Uh, ha Ha Clinton Dix obviously emerged toward the tail end of last year. He's going to be a big-time player. On defense, Geno Smith is going to be a key factor whether he's a starting corner or the nickel corner, he's going to get a lot of play time because we know Bama and these uh, are is new in, names. in the nickel a bunch. Uh, Ryan Kelly's going to be the center, center, most likely. Uh, Brian Vogler at tight end is going to get his opportunity. Uh, but, again, those are going to become household names, particularly if the tie continues to win. Phil, uh, A.J. McCarron, I, I think Alabama quarterbacks, we've seen now recently, that they unfairly get the label of they manage a game and that's it. And then, and then the conversation ends because of all the talent that they have, because of their ability to play great defense, because of their ability to win. A.J. McCarron, how much more than that is he as a quarterback? Well, I think there, that's a big misnomer out there because if you think about A.J. McCarron going into his first year to start in 2010, or excuse me, 2011, the question was, hey, this guy's a gunslinger. We're going to have to hold him back, this, that, and the other. Jim McElwain, who's now the coach at Colorado State, was the coordinator at that time, said, I'm worried that A.J. wants to drive 80 miles an hour when it's a 45-mile-an-hour speed limit. They really tried to adjust his mentality, and now I think he's in a great place where he understands this is the place and the time to mash the accelerator, and this is the time and place to pull off a bit. He's really figured out what it takes for Alabama to win so far. I think going into his senior year, particularly from an NFL standpoint, I think there's a lot of scouts out there that watch him and say, wait a minute, he's had a great line, great receivers, running back, terrific defense, a punter, Cody Mandel, who's <laughs> pinning them back, short field, etc. Anybody could do it. We're going to find out this year how much, how many plays that he can make can he make on his own? In other words, that line is not going to be as strong. 
there's going to be some holes punched in it, particularly early in the year. So he's going to have to make some plays with his legs. And I think this pro scouts want to see him do some things on his own that he hasn't really been required to do. And if he can move with the ball and still throw it accurately and keep a drive alive or go convert for a first down and lead to a field goal, have maybe some kind of comeback uh, win if Bama falls behind for some reason or another, those are all things that are going to end up being uh, real positives for him going forward and into next year's draft. We touched on this a little bit, and Coach Bill Battle, the new athletics director, taking over for the late, great Mal Moore, he, he kind of started the conversation. And for a person that grew up in the state of Alabama, cut their teeth on Coach Bryant, know the story so well, know Nick Saban so well, been around the program so close to the last few years. With this in mind, after 81 games at Alabama, Coach Bryant had 68 wins. After 81 games at Alabama, Nick Saban has 68 wins. If he goes 14-0 and this year, the Bryant-Saban-Saban-Bryant -Saban -Bryant conversation is out there. What do you say to it? Well, that conversation is out there, but I think there will always be a reverence directed to Coach Bryant because he's not with us, and he hasn't been with us for over 30 years yeah. now. Uh, he's almost a mythical figure for this generation. They see pictures, they hear the voice, but... They don't recognize what he did during his time. You're talking about two different eras. I think for what Nick Saban has done in terms of coming into the modern era with the restrictions, the rules, it's a different world. He's done an amazing job. Uh, this morning I made the comment on another interview that to me the two people that if you could say other than the commissioner, Mike Slive, the two people who – were on the ground and in the game that have really been the driving force of SEC football and kind of got this whole seven-year run started. Tim Tebow, when he went to Florida in the East, and Nick Saban with what he did at LSU and at Alabama, to me those are the two individuals that really propel this whole thing forward. Uh, there's a lot of similarities from what I understand between Coach Bryant and Nick Saban. Uh, Nick Saban is in the here and now, so a lot of people – are going to say that maybe he's doing it better. Who's to say? They've done it with different styles, and uh, it's, uh, if, it's a great thing for Alabama fans to even be <laughs> able to have that conversation because, let's face it, for 20-plus years, there weren't a lot of comparisons right. made uh, to the greatest coach uh, of co that college football had ever seen in Coach Paul Bryant. Phil Savage, always a pleasure. Thanks for stopping by. Great to see All you right, again. guys. Enjoy it, as always. Thank we'll you, catch Phil. up during the fall, too. Thank, thank, Absolutely. And thank you for lunch. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Compliments of the senior. That's and right. here's the thing. We actually were supposed to be doing it for tomorrow, and they put the wrong sign up, so we get a two-for-one. <laughs> You'll get a free lunch tomorrow from Yay! the senior bowl. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break. Here on Fish and Stats, we'll come back and uh, return to wrap up this hour. Uh, here live from Hoover, Alabama, on SEC Media Days on Sports 56, 87.7 FM. MSL with Kevin Cerrito and Marcus Hunter. Saturdays from 11 till 1 on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Hey, are you a busy adult ready to make a change to improve your future? Southwest Tennessee Community College is really affordable, about half the cost of your average state university. Busy adults can attend classes at Southwest before work, after work, even on weekends. You can learn anywhere, anytime with online classes. And Southwest accelerated and fast-track classes mean you can finish coursework in as little as 6 to 18 months. Plus, graduates from Southwest have a very high job placement rate. What are you waiting for? Call 901-333-4399 or go online at southwest.tn.edu forward slash recruitment. It's golf season again, folks, and that means the Mid-South Golfer Radio Show, sponsored by Lads, is back in prime time. Join Rob Fisher, Brett Norsworthy, and former PGA Tour professional Bob Walcott as they broadcast live from Tunica National each Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. They'll break down each week's events, have knowledgeable guests to share their insights, discuss what's going on both locally and nationally, and tell you how to improve your game with Bob's Tip of the Week. That's the Mid-South Golfer Radio Show from 3 to 4 each and every Thursday, sponsored by Lads, your trusted source for all your turf, golf, and utility needs. When you see the happy face on our truck, you'll be confident your drain will be unstuck. Get the happy face trucks headed to your house today to learn more about Energy Star's certified products that reduce utility bills. Hiller features the Rude Ultra Series AC system that is rated number one for reliability. You can rely on Rude and Hiller Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. 
Look for the happy face on our truck. Call the pros at Hiller Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, your rude, reliable local contractor. Rely on Hiller's 100% satisfaction guarantee. Happy you'll be, or the service is free. Call Hiller today, or go to happyhiller.com. If you're not happy, you don't pay. That's the Hiller Plumbing way. So call a happy face truck today. Hey, I'm here with Greg Hapke, General Manager at Acura of Memphis. And Greg, I'm excited because you guys have a bunch of new arrivals to tell our listeners about. We do, Peter. We've got the brand new 2013 RDX, which gets 28 miles per gallon, has 273 horsepower, and starts from only $3.99 per month. Also, we have the brand new 2013 ILX with 35 miles per gallon, $209 per month. That's a super nice vehicle to get started in the Acura. Greg, sounds great, but I heard a little rumor that there's something really special that you guys are just ready to announce. Peter, everybody talks about the Acura Legend. Well, the Legend actually became the RL, and now the Legend returns. For 2014, we have the new Acura RLX. This vehicle, Peter, it's amazing. It will pull you back into the lane. It will stop you. I mean, it practically drives itself. I've got to take a test drive, Greg, and I know where I can find it. 385 and Ridgeway or online at AcuraOfMemphis.com. You'll see the dedication in every single step. You'll see it in the smiles when smiles are hard to get. You'll see it in the little things that add up to success. The caring and passion. Are the things that we love best. Wolf Chase Linden Brace is your Mid-South provider for orthotics and prosthetics. They are an ABC accredited facility and their practitioners are ABC certified. At Wolf Chase Linden Brace, their services include artificial limbs, legs and arms, braces of all kinds, and custom molded inserts. You can call them today at 901-507-7821 for their location on Highway 64 in between Germantown Parkway and Appling Road. Or visit them at their new location in Jackson, Tennessee. That number is 731-660-5900. Or visit them on the web at wolfchaselemonbrace.com. To yours with Chase Lim and Grace. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by Auto Nation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. We thank all our sponsors here at SEC Media Days FRS Power Sports, Body for Life, Dill Day TV, Cougar Chemical, and Auto Nation GMC. It started this morning. Will Muschamp meeting with the media, and he talked for, well, about 15 minutes without taking a breath. Said they've made great strides in year two, and he talked about that questionable offense heading into training camp. Football. Uh, that's the bottom line. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. We, we, we've got to create more plays for ourselves, more explosive plays for ourselves down the field. I think we will be able to do that as we move forward. I thought we did that throughout spring. Uh, I know it's been a point of emphasis for an offensive staff in our offseason as far as our offseason studies. Uh, you know, limit negative plays, whether it's a sack or a tackle for a loss or self-inflicted win with penalties. Uh, those are things we cannot afford to do, especially in our league as good as the defenses are. And really the other point of emphasis we have is scoring touchdowns in the red zone. That was something that we felt like we left a lot of points on the field in some games uh, and really cost ourselves as far as moving forward in the game. But, again, year two in the system – Jeff Triscoll, it's his football team, a guy that uh, I thought attacked the offseason the way you're supposed to as far as his mental preparation and watching film, certainly understands what we're doing offensively much better than a year ago, which is expected, uh, and, and a guy that I'm really excited to see play. I see You see the leadership taking over on our team, and more than anything, uh, other than maybe the tight end position, I, I think we got a chance to be better than – than we were at all positions than we were last year offensively. So really excited about him. There's been a, a lot said about his uh, signing a uh, non-compete contract with the uh, Boston Red Sox. Uh, Jeff came in my office after Boston uh, drafted him and said, Coach, this is the deal. They want to they wanna sign me, and if I ever want to play baseball, i got to play for the Red Sox. I hadn't picked up a bat in two years, and I have no intention of playing baseball, but they're willing to cut me a check by NCAA's rules. It's, it's legal. And I said, Jeff, if you were my son, I'd tell you to sign the contract. So uh, his commitment level to the University of Florida is outstanding. Uh, but he had a great opportunity there with a great organization. If he ever does want to pick, pick up a bat or a glove, certainly being a part of the Red Sox organization would be outstanding. I think we're better up front. We uh, 
talent, more talented and deeper. Uh, we have seven guys on our campus right now. John Halapio is with us today as well as Jeff Driscoll. John's going into his third year as a starter, as an outstanding leader. Uh, all of the intangible things you want in a football player, John has. And a guy that I'm really excited for his senior season. John Harrison, again, another guy is a three-year starter at the center position. Uh, as a guy that's really played outstanding football for us. Chaz Green has started now for two years. Uh, D.J. Humphreys is up between 285 and 290. Started some games for us as a true freshman. Kyle Koning has started games for us. Ian Silverman has played a lot, and Tripp Thurman's played a lot. So we got seven guys on campus right now on the offensive line uh, that have played a lot of football at Florida. And then you add with that Max Garcia and Tyler Moore, both guys that started at their prospective universities before they came to Florida. So we've got nine guys with Division One playing experience at a high level. So that's deeper than we've been in a far cry from where we were two years ago. So very pleased with where we are up front. We were a little banged up in the spring, but we certainly came uh, uh, coming out of the spring. One man's misfortunes, another man's opportunity, and we had some guys take some very, very valuable reps uh, at the offensive line position. I feel really good at the running back position. Matt Jones, I think, is uh, primed for a, for a big season. A guy that's worked extremely hard in the offseason in spring ball. I've got tremendous confidence in Mac Brown and some of the younger backs that we have on campus. I think we need to improve at the tight end position. Uh, you lose Jordan Reed in the third round of the Washington Redskins, and by design was our leading receiver last year as a guy that was a tough mismatch issue for defenses and had a phenomenal season for us. But we need to improve at the position. I'm not telling you anything I haven't told them. I think we've made some positive steps forward at the receiver position. I've said before, I think Quinn Dunbar probably was more of one of our most improved players at the receiver position and really on our entire football team. And excited about him taking the next step as a receiver. Andre DeBose and Solomon Patton both head into their senior years and expecting them to, to really have good years. LaTroy Pittman and Rafael Andreas are two guys that continue to develop as young players. And we find, we signed five young receivers. Luches Purifor will have a role on offense. Uh, that'll be, you know, really predicated on two situations, how well the five young guys and the guys we have on campus develop at the receiver position and how well we develop with some of the other defensive backs, how, uh, how big a role he will have on offense. He will have a role on offense. He probably won't take any snaps on the first 12 to 14 practices because we need to find out what those other guys can do and how we've progressed from spring. Trey Burton will, will play about everything. He'll play wide out and, and running back and, and quarterback and, He'll have a huge part of our offense as, uh, as we move forward. That's passion. <laughs> the man just brought it today. Um, Purifoy is going to play offense. He's probably the best cornerback in all of the Southeastern Conference, if not in the entire nation. They're putting him on offense because they don't they don't have anybody wide receiver that they, they can count on. They, they don't, and it's hard to believe that Jacquez Green, Ike Hilliard, Ray Dale Anthony – Chris Doring, that school doesn't have a wide receiver. And they have a quarterback that doesn't throw the ball down the field. Yet with the, the, a lot of people are expecting big things from this year. And that's if Will Muschamp is not a big winner at Florida, it's, be, it's because his offense didn't keep up. Now, having some continuity at court, coordinator this year will help. We will take a break. When we come back, we'll hear more from Commissioner Slive. Also, We'll have our sleep cheap big number of the day. Ole Miss Athletics Director Ross Bjork will join us. And then we'll talk a little baseball, a little all-star game tonight. Dave Chase, Commissioner of the Prospect League, will join us here on Fish and Stats. Final hour of the program live from Hoover, Alabama, on SEC Media Days. Come join next on Sports 56, 87.7 FM. The talk at most of the Mid-South golf shops these days is the new course at Village Creek State Park. If you've played the Ridges at Village Creek, please keep talking and come back soon. If you haven't played the Ridges and you're looking for a treat, call 870-238-5226 for a tee time. 45 minutes from downtown Memphis, exit 242 on I-40. 27 holes rolling through a hardwood forest on dramatic Crowley's Ridge. Come and see what all the talk's about. This ad sponsored by our friends at the Wind Chamber of Commerce. 
Hi, this is John Conway with Conway Services. Are these hot summer days taking a toll on your home's air conditioning system? How about your home's utility costs? One thing I've noticed over the years is most homes with old air conditioning systems also have poor insulation. Over the years, your home's insulation can deteriorate to the point that you're losing your cooling right through the attic. Conway Services is making July the perfect time to improve your home's comfort and lower your cooling costs. Right now, with the purchase of a Carrier Infinity Heating and Air Conditioning System, receive 5 inches of attic insulation absolutely free. Now that'll help with the cooling cost. We'll also include an April air cleaner to help remove dust from your home, a 10-year parts warranty, and the fully programmable carrier infinity controller that connects to your smartphone. If that's not enough, take three years to pay interest-free. And you know the carrier units are made right here in Carnival. So call Conway Services, the Mid-South's premier heating, cooling, and plumbing service company at 384-3511. Call 384-3511. Conway Services. Call Conway today. Jim's Place is a family-owned and operated restaurant serving Memphis since 1921. Famous for its steaks, Jim's has something for everyone including seafood and Greek specialties reflecting the owner's heritage. Father and son owners Costa and Bill Terrace are committed to providing the best in food and service to you. And our new love is catering. Now in a beautiful new location, Popper and Perkins, and online at jimsplacememphis.com. 901-766-2030. Trade-in days are here, and your friends at Cougar Chemical are offering the best deals around. If you need a new pressure washer or any piece of cleaning equipment, bring your trade-in and come on down to Cougar Chemical at 3725 Getwell Road. Drag it, push it, pull it, heck, you can even bring it in in pieces. No trade will be denied. Financing is available, and if your credit is no credit, that's okay. We take most forms of cash and all major credit cards, tax refunds, stocks, bonds, gold, silver, and diamonds. We won't be undersold. We want your business. Buy with confidence. Confidence with our 90-day price match guarantee. If you're new to the cleaning industry, you're still in luck. Cougar Chemicals has been serving the Mid-South with environmentally responsible cleaning solutions since 1970. For all of your cleaning needs, Cougar Chemical is the place to go. Cougar Chemical has industrial, commercial, janitorial, and automotive cleaning equipment, chemicals, and supplies. Call Cougar Chemical today at 363-5000 or visit us on the web at cougarchemical.com. That's 363-5000 or cougarchemical.com. The voice of the fan. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis. Fan 87.7 FM WPGFLP Memphis. A Flynn Broadcasting Station. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It's 5 o'clock. I'm Bash. Of course, you know you've got the MLB All-Star Game going on tonight. It'll start at 7 o'clock Central Time. You can catch it on ESPN as the National League takes on the American League. Matt Harvey will tow the rubber for the National side as Max Scherzer will take the mound for the American League. Some news out of Major League Baseball as well. The MLB announced that it will move forward with plans to expand instant replay for umpires call next season. It's about time, I'd say. Major League Baseball Executive Vice President Joe Torre said, we're pretty confident we'll have it in place for 2014. Video review has been in place for home run calls since 08, and Bud Selig initially wanted to put add trap plays and fair foul calls down the line for the 2013 season, but change was put off while more radical options have been examined. Another MLB news, the Baseball Players Association says any suspensions resulting from the sport's latest drug investigation won't be served until next year if the discipline is challenged before an arbitrator. That's referring to the Alex Rodriguez and Ryan Braun deal. But some NBA notes as well. After losing their first two NBA Summer League games over the weekend, the Grizzlies are back at it tonight. They'll take on the Phoenix Suns. That's a 7.30 start time Central Time on NBA TV if you want to check it out. Other news around the league, the Miami Heat informed Mike Miller's agent that they'll use their amnesty clause on Miller. And Knicks guard and sixth man of the year, J.R. Smith, underwent knee surgery. He'll be out three to four months. The Sports Report is brought to you by Frontier Western Store. Time for a new pair of boots. Frontier Western Store It's just the pair in their famous boot showroom. Work boots and dress boots from Ariat, Rocky, Red Wing, and more. Frontier Western Stores on Goodman Road and Olive Branch and on the web at FrontierWesternStore.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Fish and Stats, final hour on this Tuesday afternoon, live from SEC uh, Media Days. Coming up this hour, we are going to talk a little baseball. The All-Star Game is tonight. Dave Chase is going to join us, as he does each week, and move it up a day with uh, the All-Star Game being tonight. Also uh, coming up, Ross Bjork, Ole Miss Athletics Director, is scheduled to join us. We are also going to hear from Commissioner Mike Slive. So far today, you've heard from Gary Pinkle, Missouri head coach. 
Q Freeze joined us live, the Ole Miss head coach, Ole Miss linebacker Mike Mary, Florida head coach Will Muschamp, and Commissioner Mike Slive. We'll hear a little more from uh, Mike Slive coming up uh, here in moments. Uh, tomorrow it's going to be another busy day. we got six teams coming through tomorrow for SEC Media Days, and we'll have them all covered for you. Uh, throughout the afternoon um, and really covered for you all day uh, we'll have some uh, we'll be joining the guys uh, early in the morning and uh, with Peter and also uh, at sports time and then Greg of course will be here live at 11 Keith Parker here at 1 and then Stats and I wrapping up each afternoon here from 3 to 6 and uh, mentioned all our sponsors and also want to mention Dill Day TV um, FRS Power Sports Body for Life Cougar Chemical Auto Nation GMC and Dilday TV. Dilday TV, it's hot outside at Dilday TV. The deals are even hotter during the summer sizzling sale. Save hundreds on the Sony 60 and 70 inch 3D LED TVs. Or come check out the 60 LG Plasma, $500 off. Plus big savings on all big screens from Sharp, Samsung, and Toshiba. And save big on Dolby Digital Surround Sound Systems. And big on entertainment centers as well. Plus, at Dill Day, you always get for free what other places charge. Free delivery and professional setup. If you have a question, Dill Day has the most knowledgeable sales staff around to help you decide exactly what TV is right for you. You can get a TV with the Internet apps. Dill Day has that as well. 3D TVs. Dill Day has it. A huge projector. They got that. At Dill Day, you'll never pay for something you don't need, and you'll always get the right TV. Plus, if your TV needs service, Dill Day's a place to go. Dill Day TV, Winchester and Hacks Cross between Costco and Lowe's. Imagine the all-star game tonight with one of those TVs. Imagine, imagine the open championship this weekend with that. And then, of course, football season. It's a great week to just go ahead and get it and get it geared now. up for football. Go now. They're still there. Go now. Dill Day TV, Winchester and Hacks Cross between Costco and Lowe's. Uh, we heard from the commissioner a little earlier today when he basically was calling out the NCAA, one of the big stories here today at SEC Media Days. But the commissioner also had his, well, as, as he liked to call it, his brag bag uh, when talking about the past year in the Southeastern Conference. He talked about what he, well, the success that the conference has had in the past 12 months. He also talked a little bit about basketball and how basketball needs to keep it bet get better here's a portion of mike's live from earlier today with his state of the sec address every year it is my privilege to kick off media days by reflecting on another extraordinary year with my annual brag bag by touching upon some of the national issues in intercollegiate athletics and by sharing more about the sec network I continue to be amazed by the extraordinary accomplishments of our student athletes year after year, and this past year was no exception. So here comes the brag bag. In the sport of football, the SEC won its seventh straight BCS National Championship, finished the regular season with six teams ranked in the top ten, the first conference to accomplish such a feat in the history of college football set a record with 63 NFL draft picks, more than double that of any other conference, and an SEC football player was awarded the Heisman Trophy for the fourth time in the last six years. In addition to winning the national championship in football, we captured titles in men's indoor track and field, gymnastics, women's swimming and diving, equestrian, men's golf, men's outdoor track and field, bringing the total number of national championships won by the SEC to 86 since the year 2000. At the same time, many of our football student athletes excelled academically. Alabama's Barrett Jones was awarded the National Football Foundation William B. Campbell Trophy, better known to all of you as the Academic Heisman. Three of the last four academic All-Americans of the year came from the SEC, namely Barrett Jones in 2012, Alabama's Greg McElroy in 2010, and Florida's Tim Tebow in 2009. And 
The SEC had 10 first-team academic All-America recipients, five National Football Foundation Scholar athletes, and nine representatives on the American Football Coaches Association Good Works team. At the same time, we talk about our successes on the field and in the classroom. We cannot ignore the recent off-the-field incidents involving both current and former student-athletes. Not all student-athletes fulfill the high expectations we have for them. And while the negative actions of a few garner headlines, the fact is that the vast majority of these young people conduct themselves appropriately. Notwithstanding the fact that our institutions have mechanisms in place to recognize problems, support systems to address personal issues, policies to provide implementation of discipline, and the willingness to enforce these policies, it is a crushing disappointment when, despite all of these efforts, a young person throws away the opportunity for a promising future. We are not naive enough to think we can put an end to all unacceptable behavior. But that doesn't mean we won't continue to try, try, and try. For those of you who were with us in Destin this past spring, you will recall that we spent a lot of time talking about football scheduling. The end result was a decision to commit the conference to a review of our scheduling format in anticipation of the 2016 season. This review will include whether or not to play an eight or nine game conference schedule and whether or not to retain permanent non-divisional opponents. In the meantime, until that review is complete, we will continue to schedule based on the current 6-1-1 format pending the results of that review. As I said this spring, the simple goal of this review, although it is not simple to do, is to select the format that is in the long-term best interest of the conference as a whole. Now, speaking of scheduling, I want to take a moment to comment on SEC men's basketball. The fact that the SEC has won three of the last eight NCAA men's basketball championships, has two schools represented among the top ten that have won multiple men's basketball championships, and is third in the number of championships won by a conference, does not offset the fact that last year men's basketball season did not meet our high expectations. So to focus more directly on men's basketball from a conference perspective, last week we announced the appointment of Associate Commissioner Mark Whitworth to the newly created full-time position of Director of Men's Basketball. In this role, Mark will serve as liaison with our coaches, oversee the tournament, prepare the conference schedule, work closely with our media partners in matters pertaining to men's basketball, and coordinate non-conference scheduling. At the same time, we have asked Greg Shaheen, former NCAA Vice President for Men's Basketball, to consult with the conference and our member institutions about non-conference basketball scheduling. And as I said in Destin, no one of our institutions is an island, and whatever, whatever, whatever our, one of our institutions does with scheduling affects all of us. Well, basketball talk from the commissioner mm -hmm. uh, today at his State of the SEC address. It's allowed by him. It is Well, he can do whatever he wants. So he basically is ready to dump the NCAA today, we learned. <laughs> and it sounds like he, if they don't get their act together, he's ready to just go ahead and dump basketball. <laughs> and, and I don't mean it is a crack at the commissioner, but it was, it was some pretty serious stuff today for Mike Slott. Get it in gear. Yeah. And wants them to get it in gear. And you see Ole Miss, what they've done with their non-conference schedule for the upcoming basketball season, it, it's it's remarkably different what we've seen in the past. Yeah, and I, I don't know what the exact number will be, but 18, 19, 20 wins, maybe at large. It might be enough because it hasn't been enough 
recently. Oh, no, 24 and 25 hadn't been. Yeah, Mike's live uh, also talking about uh, the NCAA solutions and strategies to help the NCAA going forward. He said the NCAA has not been successful. So uh, interesting to see what comes from that uh, from Mike's live. Also, a couple of other uh, notes from what has happened today. Will Muschamp uh, says that a 1,000-yard rusher, rusher will be the norm at Florida after Mike Gillisley had over 1,000 yards last year, the first Florida back since 04 to have over 1,000 yards. They've never had back-to-back seasons with a running back over 1,000 yards. He also said linebacker Antan- Antonio Morrison um, – will be disciplined for his arrest on simple battle battery. Uh, however, a decision on whether or not he'll miss games has not been made yet. Also, he ripped into uh, the state of Ohio for turning in the Gators on a couple of uh, NCAA deals. On the 1,000-yard rusher front, that's just 83 a game in a 12-game schedule. Yeah. Is, is that that big a deal? Uh, doesn't seem like it, but it is more so in college than it is in the NFL, uh, only because um, in the NFL you have one back. He's your feature back. In yeah. college you don't have a lot of feature backs. No, it's it's either your quarterback's running or you got two guys back, mm-hmm. or you're throwing the ball. So it's difficult to have that guy. You see a lot of guys who are leading rushers on their teams last year that had like 600 yards, mm-hmm. 650, 700. I think the big thing is is rushing attempts. You you got to keep trying it. You have to keep yeah, stay after it. And when he talked about it today, when Muschamp talked about it today with Florida, he made an interesting point. And said, "Well, we're different than a lot of schools because we can recruit those type of guys up front and those type of backs that are going to be the guy that's just going to get the ball and we're going to run it down your throat. Other schools can't get those guys. I just can't believe the Gators." will ever become tailback you. I know they've had great tailbacks, and I, I talked about some earlier, but just to, to get away from that, that's hard to believe. Yeah. They can get it all. Yeah. Uh, also, Gary Pinkle talking today, head coach at Mizzou, says uh, they will not have two a days. He wants his team to stay healthy. Also said James Franklin's the number one quarterback going into fall camp. Hugh Freeze say, said today he's not optimistic about Nick Brassel being eligible for the Ole Miss Rebels. It was – a good sign when you know he went JUCO last year and decided he would be able to come back this year, and it looked like he'd be on the team. But uh, it doesn't look like he's going to be eligible to play. He's put the work in. It's just it was just a mountain of work. It might you know sometimes it might just be more than than you can do, and I, I think that's been the case. He's really put the effort in. It was just almost too much for anyone. Yeah. All right. How about our uh, sleep cheap big number of the day? So listen. Um, I was wondering, can I have your number? Brought to you by the good folks at Sleep Cheap. All mattresses brand new. None are refurbished. None are used. So they all come with full manufacturer warranty. And they can give you great deals on brand new mattresses and mattresses that will make you sleep a lot better. A fuller queen pillow top mattresses on sale as low as $149.99. Memory foam mattresses. They're a replica of Tempur-Pedic, but a quarter of the price. You can get them all. At Sleep Cheap and Stats, my number today is an easy one. Mike Slive brought it up. 86 national championships in the Southeastern <laughs> Conference since 2000. Seven national championships this year and, of course, seven BCS championships in a row. Yeah, seven's a big number here today with the number of national championships in a row and Jadavion and Clowney roaming around upstairs. <laughs> He's a little big, too, isn't he? <laughs> he is. I did like, uh, apparently, the security guard that's walking him around said, Really? I mean, if he's not going to do anything, what am I going to do? Uh, Our big number of the day brought to you by the great folks at Sleep Cheap. You can check them out online, mysleepcheap.com. Give them a call, 503-9930, or stop by any of the five Memphis locations. Pleasure to welcome to the program, sitting down with us now, uh, the athletics director at uh, Ole Miss. Ross Bjork is with us. How are you, Ross? I'm doing great, Rob. Well, great. You, you guys going? all great. dressed real nice today. Well, Proud you know, of the I Ole knew, Miss Rebels today. You know, I knew that Mike and Dante would really get it out there, you know, with the dress. And so I, <laughs> right. I threw on the summer, uh, I don't even know what you call this kind of coat. Looking but it's good, a summer though. coat. Cream, <laughs> maybe? Hot. Cream. It's, it's hot in Birmingham. <laughs> it's hot in uh, Oxford. And, yeah. uh, you know, we're in the South, so we got to dress appropriately. Could, if. <laughs> The first year, could it have gone any better? 
for you? Well, you, I mean, you never know. You, you can't predict anything. Uh, you know, what we tried to do is just uh, capture the enthusiasm, capture what's great about Ole Miss, uh, let things uh, happen the way uh, they were in place, and, and really just capitalize, you know, on the assets that, that we have at Ole Miss. And things uh, happened. You know, football obviously did what they did. Basketball had a great run. We made the baseball NCAA tournament. Uh, our women's uh, tennis team made the NCAA tournament. Our men's team, you know, we, you, we have a whole list of accomplishments that happened this year, and so we laid the foundation is how I look at it, uh, but we're never satisfied. If you're satisfied and you say, okay, I'm going to kick my feet up you know, the month of June and July because we had a great year or, or what we think is a great year, you know what, you'll fall behind fast. Right. And so trying to remain humble but also confident and capitalize on it, uh, moving ahead, that, that's going to be our task. Uh, but it's great. It's great to see that people believe in our program and they want to have success and they're willing to invest in it and uh, that, that's what's what inspired me the most. Is a, the very, a very passionate, hungry fan hungry. core that just really they just want to win so bad. Absolutely. And they, and they want to do it the right way, and they want to, they want to see us and touch us and, and feel the program, and, and that, that's, that's what we have to do. A rebel road day. trip provided that. Rebel road trip. Grand slam two Provided years that. Around. My guys in Rebel Alley, you know, there at, uh, outside the Grove there when, when our team comes through. I mean, those are the kind of fans and, and that we have they to reach out to. They call it something else, but we call it Rebel uh, Alley. <laughs> officially, it's Rebel Alley. They, right. The sign says Rebel Alley. Right. And the T-shirts say Rebel Alley. Right. But, you know. I imagine when you, you came as the athletics director, a lot of suggestions from fans. Your email was probably full. Uh, a lot of suggestion box. Still is. Still yeah. is. <laughs> but the I, I think for what was wanted, what was needed, and what you guys have just been talking about here, I mean, to see where it was then and to see what people had wanted and were just hoping for and just wanting any sort of sense of that back to where you are today, you have come a long way. You know, I've had people tell me, Rob, that they didn't expect us to be anywhere near any type of position like this until 2014, that it may have taken a, a couple years to kind of get things, you know, turned around, if you will, um, to whatever degree, you know, people thought those expectations were. So to have it happen, you know, within a year, to feel good about where we are, you know, all we can do is, is we can look ahead and just say that our job was to just believe in our program, you know, infuse some energy and some confidence into what we're doing, you know, talk about Ole Miss at the highest level, promote Ole Miss at the highest level, let things happen because we can't control what happens on the field and, and just believe in our student athletes. And so you're right, it, 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 it's, it's great to see it, that it did happen that way, and now we've got to just move the needle even farther. Right. Now we know we're not satisfied with just doing this. Now we've got to go to that next level, um, especially in this league. If you just try to maintain, you know that that old saying, you'll fall behind fast. They uh, speed by you. They, they speed by they you do. so quick, so so quickly. With basketball, with men's basketball success, yeah. there was a lot uh, yep. because of Marshall Henderson. Marshall very much in the news of late. Some news about that, I heard. There, there, yeah. there is. Yeah. The, will it be a collaboration on on discipline going forward, or will you? Is that all on Andy, or yeah. will it be a, you know, your decision, or are you and Andy working Andy and Andy and I are locked arms uh, on this every step of the way. We've been in sync on every decision. We haven't had to say, hey, no, this is the way it needs to be, or I haven't had to say, no, we have to do this. Andy's been lockstep every step of the way. And the, the thing is, and, and we, we can debate this for a whole show. We don't have enough time here in my segment. But if you cut all of us open, we are educators first. So our job is to help young people if they have a problem. And our job is to focus on the human being of Marshall Henderson. And basketball is second or third right now. We've got to get him back on track. And so there's a plan in place. And if he sticks to that plan, then he can play basketball at Ole Miss again and be a student at Ole Miss again. If that doesn't happen, then, then we do have to move on. And he understands that. Andy understands that. We all understand that. Our, our chancellor has been very supportive. And so the bottom line is we're here to educate young people. We brought Marshall Henderson to Ole Miss. So we have an obligation to help him. Now he has an obligation too. And and those are the teachable moments that if you look back at any great teacher, there's a teachable moment that they put on their students. And, and, and this progress. is one of those. Rob, Robert and, Kyatt and I'm sure Dan Jones would, would say this over and over and over again. This is a school first. It is. We're here to educate people. And we know do we want to win? Of course. Do we can Marshall help us win? Absolutely. But we've taken the position where that's secondary right now. We've got to get him to a place as a human being um, to get better, and that, and that's our that's our task moving that was, ahead. That was the hard question. Here's the easy one: Would you like to be on the college football playoff committee? 
I think there's. Uh, I'll take the politically correct answer. And say Ooh. there's a lot more people with uh, experience that'll uh, be selected to be on that committee than me. I, um, <laughs> you know, honestly, I'd love to be on it. I think it'd be terrific. Um, but I'm not what's needed right now. I think uh, my my better years are ahead of me uh, as it goes as it goes to committees and things like that. And uh, you know, let the experts be on it. Uh, we've recommended some great people. Uh, Ole Miss has, and uh, hopefully some of those people might be selected. And and I think it's great for the game to have a playoff. So I'm excited to see it come together. Ross, I, and I ask you this, and it's hard to say. It's not in relation to what we were just talking about with Marshall, but but it's been talked about at SEC Media Days, in fact, over the the last few years. Does there need to be a policy league wide when it comes to? Well, uh, drug testing and mm-hmm. and things like that. Does there need to be a league policy, an NCAA policy, or with you, you almost have me convinced that maybe not because what you're talking about the institution and taking care yeah. of this this kid and and you know being educators is every school just different? Well, you know the NCAA has performance enhancing policies related to drug use, obviously. So we've got to stick to the performance and so we're talking about recreational street drugs, if sure. you will. Um, you know, I, I've been on the fence of, you know, let each institution decide for themselves uh, what's best for them, and, and that's where I'm at right now. I haven't seen any data that suggests that others are crossing a line right. that would uh, that would allow them to do anything that we're not doing. Um, and, I, and I think all of our ADs have great integrity. Um, I think they all want to do the right thing. Um, so I think that needs further study. Um, but right now I, th- I think in- each institution should do what's best for them. Um, and as long as there's a policy in place and we're holding ourselves accountable, then let us, you know, police that, you know, on each campus. Um, so I haven't seen data that says we need to do it another way right now, um, but I'm open to the conversation because I think we need to keep discussing it because it's an issue for our society. We're not just talking about college athletes. It's right. something that society faces, and we've got to be mindful and, that and these are kids and, and we they're college kids. And we can't run from it. And we can't run from it. I mean, if we think Marshall Henderson's the only one that has a problem with Ole Miss, that's not the case. There's, there's uh, students that have right. problems, and again, trying to help them right. through through those issues. Scheduling question: Your friend, you and your friend Tom Bowen, you got the football deal done. It starts next year with the University of Memphis Tigers. Where are we on men's basketball in the in Memphis? We're, yeah, Olympics? we're looking at some dates. Um, Tom and I talked about both uh, kicking that off in the 14-15 season to match up with basketball, and so uh, you know now's the time to kind of start looking at that. Basketball usually kind of happens a year out. Whereas football happens, you know, five or six years out, uh, so now's the time to really start kind of honing in on the calendar and, and getting some things, uh, hopefully, on the books uh, on both sides. Ross, thank you for stopping by. We appreciate thank you your time today. I uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you, sir. Enjoy uh, the rest of your tour uh, around the hotel here today. It's uh, great to be here. <laughs> Thanks, Ross. Okay, thank you, Ross Bjork joining us, uh, athletics director at uh, Ole Miss, and. Um, you know, we talked a lot of uh, Ole Miss today, and we thank uh, Coach Freeze for dropping by and also uh, Mike Mary for uh, dropping by a little bit uh, earlier in the show and uh, now Ross stopping by uh, as well. But uh, interesting things, you know, I've always kind of been on the side of you, you need the SEC to kind of legislate it. Make, it. make it the same for everybody. But I've always thought of it in, in the fact of f- fair for play fair mm-hmm. for the guys on the field this team's got a guy who's failed three drug tests this guy this team kicked off a guy that failed two that, that that's wrong mm-hmm. and that's the way i've always looked at it but when you hear the athletics director talk about it you know about it being about kids and being educators and you can roll your eyes if you want but bottom line is every school's different every school's students are different the in, the the enrollment is different the, and for that matter do the privates do the same as the public institutions yeah so do you keep it the same, or, or maybe it should be up to every institution, and every institution carry it, handle it the way that they want to handle, and the way they want their school to be represented. If you want to be a school that says, "Hey, you fail one, you're done," well, you you shouldn't tell them they can't do that. If that's the road that they want to take, one fail drug test, you're out. No questions asked, no tolerance. You're kicked out of the school. Well, you shouldn't go in and say, "Well, no, we're going to make the rule three. You can't." I mean, that's, that's not fair to that institution. So what's the right number, yeah. Yeah, so maybe the school should be able to do it the way they see fit. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll shift gears a little bit. We'll talk a little Major League Baseball. Dave Chase will join us. We are live from SEC Media Days here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. 
Download the free Sports 56 WHBQ app for iPhone, BlackBerry, and Android to listen live, no matter where you go. Only on Sports 56 WHBQ. Summer specials are sizzling at Edwin Watts Golf. Come celebrate our 45th anniversary with markdowns on name brand golf clubs and balls. And incredible deals on a wide selection of trendy shoes and apparel that will have you teeing off in style. To thank you for your patronage, stop by the stores in Memphis and Cordova to pick up your $10 off customer appreciation certificate. Minimal purchase required. And don't forget to beat the summer heat and tune up your game with a free custom fitting session. That's Edwin Watts Golf on North Germantown Parkway in Cordova and Poplar Avenue in Memphis. Your spots for sizzling summer deals. Hi folks, Rob Walker, Infinity of Memphis, with a message of hope for anyone struggling with the challenge of buying a used car. We understand your concerns as you search the online marketplace. Has it been maintained? What's getting ready to go wrong with it as soon as I buy it? Am I buying someone else's nightmare? Can I buy a warranty? What's a warranty? Boss, relax. relax. When you buy a used vehicle from Infinity of Memphis, you get a free lifetime powertrain warranty. So what happens if the engine has a problem? It's no problem. If the transmission has a problem, the drive shaft, rear end, or front wheel drive has a problem, or if an axle universal joint or bearing has a problem, it's no problem. And it's no problem for as long as you own the vehicle. No mileage limit, no time limit, no deductible, no hassle, and it's free. Go to infinityofmemphis.com and browse our inventory. Why would you buy a used car anywhere else? Not all makes qualify, but most do. See infinityofmemphis.com for details. Okay, Peter, I pose this question to you. Is Central Barbecue really central anymore? I mean, they've got three locations now. Hmm, philosophical, Zeke. Let me think. Yes, they are still Central Barbecue because the original will always be on Central. But you've got the location on Summer and the new one downtown right behind the National Civil Rights Museum. And here's the best part. Central Barbecue is not about location. Central Barbecue is about barbecue. The best in the city and therefore the best in the world. Have you tried the wings? I have not tried the wings yet. The barbecue is great, but they've got wings homemade chips, great side items like mac and cheese and greens. On top of that award-winning barbecue that you know and love, Zeke, it is fabulous. So you can get all the great things you can get at Central Barbecue at all three locations. All three locations and online at cbqmemphis.com. So really, they've got infinite locations. You can send it anywhere in this beautiful nation of ours, Zeke. Send a little piece of Memphis to friends and family outside the area at cbqmemphis.com. Jim's Place is a family-owned and operated restaurant serving Memphis since 1921. Famous for its steaks, Jim's has something for everyone, including seafood and Greek specialties reflecting the owner's heritage. Father and son owners, Costa and Bill Terrace, are committed to providing the best in food and service to you. And our new love is catering. Now in a beautiful new location, Poplar and Perkins, and online at jimsplacememphis.com. 901-766-2030. Now, a Sports 56 WHBQ update. It is 5.30. I'm Bash. Last night's home run derby brought us plenty of entertainment, and hopefully the All-Star game will do the same thing tonight. It'll start at 7 o'clock Central Time on ESPN. As your National League takes on the American League. Matt Harvey will take the ball first for the National League. Max Scherzer from the Lions will be the first pitcher for the American League. Got some news out of Major League Baseball as well today. They announced they're moving ahead with plans to expand instant replay for umpire calls next season. It's about time, I'd say. Major League Baseball Executive Vice President Joe Torre said, we're pretty confident we'll have it in place for 2014. Video review has been in place for home run calls, but Seeley initially wanted to add trap plays and fair foul calls for the 2013 season, but change was put off while more radical options were being examined. Another Major League Baseball news, Baseball's Players Association says any suspensions resulting from the sport's latest drug investigation likely won't be served until next year if the discipline is challenged before an arbitrator. Of course, that goes back to the A-Rod and Ryan Braun suspensions or possible suspensions. NBA news after losing their first NBA Summer League games over the weekend. Memphis Grizzlies are back at it tonight. Take on the Phoenix Suns. That game will start at 7.30 Central Time. You can catch it on NBA TV. Some other news around the league. The Miami Heat and Ford Mike Miller's agent that they will amnesty clause, They will use their amnesty clause on Miller and Knicks guard sixth man of the year. J.R. Smith underwent knee surgery. He'll be out three to four months. The sports reports brought to you by the Shot Nurse. Get your game back with testosterone replacement therapy from the Shot Nurse. It's the convenient, affordable way to revitalize your life. Check it out at shotnurse.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. 
Welcome back, everyone. Fishing Stats with you on this Tuesday afternoon. We are live from SEC Media Days in Hoover, Alabama. We'll be here all week. The day gets started early. Tomorrow morning, I'll be joining Peter Edmiston on first call. And uh, then Gaston, Greg Gaston, he'll uh, join Bash. And Sean Arnell is filling in for Wolo this week. He'll be on with George tomorrow, Stats. And uh, also Commissioner Sly will be on with uh, George tomorrow. And then uh, Greg will be on live from here in Hoover from 11 to 1. Keith Parker from 1 to 2. And then tomorrow afternoon and also Thursday afternoon, Stats and I will wrap up the day here from SEC Media Days. And we heard from uh, Mizzou and Ole Miss, Florida, and also uh, South Carolina. Here this afternoon, Genevieve Clowney says he wants a piece of Johnny Manziel. Well, he might get an opportunity for one. Tomorrow's kind of new coaches day. It is. Big day tomorrow uh, with the new coaches. you got Kentucky and Tennessee and Auburn and Arkansas all, all tomorrow, all four, along with Texas A&M and Mississippi State. Yeah, it's not going to be new coaches day tomorrow. It's going to be Johnny Manziel day. It's new coaches in Maroon day tomorrow between the new coaches in Mississippi State and Texas A&M. Yep. Yep, it'll be uh, a little sidebar story, Johnny Menzel. Might be breaking the lo- local news <laughs> live in College Station tomorrow. Local programming. It'll tomorrow. be, you know, normally they take all the athletes and they will put them in the room and you just basically go up to a table and talk to them. I don't know how they're going to handle Johnny Menzel tomorrow because it's it's going to be a circus. Should they send him up to the main stage? Never been done, has it? I don't think so. You know, I was asked this today. Somebody asked me, why didn't Ole Miss send Robert, Robert Kim D.J.? I said, well, he's a freshman. And Denzel would have been invited, or been I think would have been here before him. Will we ever have a player that's never played a game come to media day? Because if Herschel Walker signed now, he would. No. That was the story. Bo was the um, – that... No. You gotta play it down before you can come talk about it. Yeah, you gotta earn your dues. You gotta okay. play a year, <laughs> at least a year. I think so too. But again, if if we had had media days in this type of world we live in now, Herschel would have no been brought. No, I disagree. I don't. I don't think so. I, I think coaches still would wait for a player to play. At least a year. One, I mean, most of the coaches all bring seniors, uh, but you know, I, at least a year. All right, let's talk a little baseball. You don't have to play in the All Star game to win the home run derby. I don't know if you knew that. Well, I bring that up about last night. You don't with the winner and y'all see a You know, people kind of oh, you got to earn your stripes. Nah, no, come here, come here, son. I'll show you how it's done. Why? Well, that's kind of how it's going. He is not at the All Star game. Joining us right now, the commissioner of the Prospect League joins us each week. Talk a little baseball. Special Tuesday appearance today from Dave Chase. Hello, Dave. Good afternoon. I'm glad to hear you're talking about seniors. I feel welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, um, home run derby. You like home run derby? No. No? No. I, it, I think it's, it's boring. It does it, take forever. It took, a, <laughs> it took a long time, but... Uh, 45,000 people paid big money and sat there the whole time. And every time I say it's boring and it takes too long, and it does, it, uh, it's way too late. It could certainly make it a little quicker and maybe even throw in some other things to make the night still as long as it is. But let's speed up the home run derby. But, boy, did those guys put on a show last night, and the well, fans into were into it. They did, and, and I was surprised that, uh, at it a little bit. I didn't see I was in Lexington. Lexington. Kentucky last night at a Class A baseball game in the South Atlantic League, but the game was a one nothing Class A game. You don't get too many of those. And by the time I got back to the, the hotel, we were getting down to the nuts and bolts of the home run derby, so it worked out okay. But I just I don't. It's like fireworks. I don't understand the appeal of those time after time either. But <laughs> you, you're talking about tickets and people showing up. Look at what MLB has done with the All Star game, which not that long ago, guys, it was a single event. It was the the All-Star game was all there was to it. It was slow to be added things to it. They added the Home Run Derby. The Futures game is on Sunday, which to me is the highlight of the whole thing, is, is watching the upcoming stars play in that, that game, which is at that site. That game was created 
people don't know this, that game was created because the last time the All-Star game was in Boston, you have a limited seating capacity at Fenway Park. MLB wanted more people, more tickets, more things going on, and the Red Sox, uh, a member of the Red Sox front office, created the Futures game for an extra ticketed event. We have a celebrity softball game as part of this. We have Fan Fest. There are tons of things that this single game is now blossomed into all these things, but 30 to 40,000 people come. Uh, it, it, it's great for New York and energize, or great for baseball. I think it's energized. These, those events are energized when they're in a place like New York City. Uh, so I think it's been a pretty good couple of days for baseball. Hopefully the All-Star game itself will live up to everything else. Yeah, but aren't we a little bit, Dave, with the looming oh, iceberg ahead? Aren't we whistling a little bit through the graveyard with the decisions that will have to be made? And when will be that? When will they be made? When will the PED suspensions be announced? You know, I've, I've listened to lots of sports talk radio the last 24 hours, driving 12 hours from Memphis to Pittsburgh, uh, and I think the last thing I heard was they're now talking the first part of next season to serve the suspension. Uh, it right, that, that, that was uh, my plan, Dave. You remember that was my plan. I Rush did, it under I the did. rug till next year. <laughs> <laughs> there's a future. There's a future for you as the commissioner of a significant uh, major league practice, but you know, I don't know if that's, if that's really the answer we we really would like. Uh, but if that's what they're going to do, it, the cloud's going to hang over us. You know, all of this season through the postseason, then the spring training, and then at the beginning of the year. Oh, by the way, we're going to suspend a bunch of these big name guys for uh, you know 150 days or something ridiculous. I don't. I don't know. I. I, baseball does a terrible job of managing these things. I just wish, let's get it done with. Announce the suspensions, get them served, uh, perhaps for all likelihood, end a Rod's career, even though I understand he hit, a, he hit a home run last night in his rehab assignment at Double A Baseball. How he does that with all the swirling around him, I have no idea. The on the field. Gonna... Yeah, on, on the field tonight, Dave Chase, it matters whether we like it or not, it does matter. One of the two managers, it really matters for Jim Leland, very much in control of whether he's at home for one, two, six, and seven or on the road for those. The other manager, he knows how important it is because he's won two of the last three. Will they be managing for keeps tonight? First of all, I think the All-Star game has always mattered. It's mattered since I was 12 years old, the first time I really have any memories of it. The game has mattered all along. It doesn't need home field advantage in the World Series to make it matter. Perhaps it needs home field advantage in the World Series to prevent Bud Fielding from de declaring a tie, but the game has always mattered. I, and I do think the players throughout history have wanted to win it. Uh, you know, we've always we've referred to it as an exhibition game, things like that. But I think it does matter to the players. I think there's a sense of pride. They want to be on the winning team. I, you know, I don't know. League identity has certainly disappeared these days, but I think they will. Now, now of course, Jim Leland's got the, the magic card to win the game because he has a he has a pinch runner that he can use later on in the game when he needs to score a run <laughs> when, it's, when it's really important. So perhaps the advantage goes to him. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it, it should be fun and exciting. It's going to be long. It's going to take a long time to play, but I still think it's, uh, it should be exciting, whether or not the World Series home field advantage is part of it or not. And uh, I think one thing that's going to be great to see, Jim Leland making out a point today that Mariano Rivera will pitch tonight. There's no, maybe we'll get him into the game, but Mariano Rivera will pitch in the game tonight. Jim Leland making that promise today. And he should, and uh, certainly deserves this moment. And, and Dave, he, he's got to be the first uh, closer that's a first ballot guy, isn't he? I. Uh, well, we've had some great closers that can't even get into the Hall of Fame, let alone be right. first ballot guys. But I would think he's got to be, you know, automatic first ballot. And and you know, my bud, my buddy Tom Seaver has the the, the highest percentage of votes, ninety eight point something. Uh, I would think Rivera could very well be the first guy to get a hundred percent of the first place votes to go into the Hall of Fame. And no one has dominated the game the way he has. No one, well, not no one, but he's one of the few players that seems to really appreciate what the game means, not only to him, but to fans and the people that work in the ballparks and all those kinds of things. But he dominated, I mean, 19 years as a member of the New York Yankees, is, and, and it's pretty amazing, pretty amazing. So I would, uh, you know, five years from now or whatever it is, uh, I think we'll, 
We'll be celebrating Rivera going into the Hall of Fame on the first first ballot, without a doubt. Without 19, a doubt. So where are 19. the other relievers? Where are the other guys? Where's yeah. Lee Smith? Yeah. No, I agree. I, I, I'm with you, but now you, you, y'all are the ones that always don't want anybody in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> never, in, de- in defense of Rob, he's never said that. He's a, he likes having people come into the Hall of Fame, but not everybody. <laughs> right. And, and and I must defend football. The reason why their number is, and they have such big classes, well, they have more playing. And, I mean, it's almost double the roster size every single year. I guess. but And I've been to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. They do a magnificent job, but it's not the Baseball Hall of Fame. When, oh, you no, walk no, into the, when you walk into the Baseball Hall of Fame, the real Hall of Fame, not the museum and all the other stuff, just the Hall of Fame, it's got to be like going to the St. Patrick's Cathedral. I mean, it is mm-hmm. amazing. It's inspiring. It's good. I, I'll never forget the first time I did it. It was just unbelievable. I think we're going to catch up on Friday and talk a little more second half, but no one, no one starts back until Friday. It's a day off tomorrow like we – pretty much always have done, and now everybody on Thursday. And I think I know the reason why. In case, in case with it deciding home field advantage, what if you had a thunderstorm or a front settle in over All-Star City tonight and rain it out? A two-day event. Baseball had to build in some flex time, and, of course, the the league office kind of blamed it on the union. Yeah, obviously, it's easy to blame it on the union, but, you know, I remember as a kid, it would get rained out on Tuesday. We just played it Wednesday afternoon. I don't think the economics allow that anymore. I mean, you've got to play it at night, and you you, know, you got to get the TV audience and all that sort of stuff. I don't. It doesn't really bother me with a four-day break. Um, it's all that way. All the players get a day off or two days off to recuperate. I mean, it's, just, it's a grueling season. The baseball season. It may not be as physical as the as the, as the football season, but day after day after day. Uh, it's grueling. We see the injuries piling up. Well, all the players that were replaced that were originally on the All Star team, we've had to bring in replacement players. And I think a lot of it is just fatigue. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't begrudge them the day off. It's, as a fan, it's kind of hard because there's no baseball. Uh, right. But you can live with it. Well, we'll be chomping at the bit come Friday night, though. <laughs> well, I've already filled in a Class A game, and I've got the Prospect League All Star game is tomorrow night, and. Uh, uh, I'm going to drive back from Butler back to Memphis. I'm going to catch an Happy League rookie league game. And uh, I forget where now. Where am I going? Some place, Kingsport, Tennessee. To see uh, a, short, a short season rookie game on the way back. So I managed to fill, of course, I can manage to fill in 365 pretty much with uh, with some baseball. I'll be okay. <laughs> uh, Dave, uh, news today. I'm sure you love this as well. Uh, Joe Torre's confident expanded replay in 2014. I, how expanded? I don't know how expanded. I think it's ridiculous. They can't ask Angel Hernandez. They can't manage the replay they have now. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know how far they're going to expand it. What What is the technology? How do we prevent it from, you know, the, the flow of a baseball game? I know fans that don't love the game don't appreciate the flow of the game, but you're going to break that up even more so now. I just, I'm not in favor of it. I just, it, to me, it's another PR attempt on baseball's part to, to show how modern the game is and how we're going to get it right. Well, we've gotten it wrong with replay, and we'll get it wrong without it. We'll continue to get it wrong with more replay. So I'm not a big fan. I not only love visiting with both of you guys about baseball, I count both of y'all as true friends. Somewhere out there, not only be thinking about me tonight, maybe even call 911 if we got into a 15th or a 16th or a 17th inning and Bud says, let him go back in. <laughs> oh, my. Wow. I, I don't know. I because don't. I will need a straight jacket, padded cell, and a lot of medication. <laughs> I have a hard time. I mean, we got to be realistic. When the guy comes out and we all start doing you, you, you basically, you, you just have to hope as a baseball fan that doesn't happen. I mean, that's, 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 the only, that's, that's the only advice I can give you. So I just hope that doesn't happen. The good news and if it does, we'll cross that bridge if we get there. Because I don't know what he'd do. You can't tie. Home field advantage is on the line. I think I know what he would do, and that probably is what upsets all of us. But 
I think we need to have some assurance that he, he's listening to people like Joe Torrey and Frank Robinson and Dick Ayers. He really called the day-to-day class kind of I, I, I wake up tomorrow morning in UAB, at UAB Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to drive you there? <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to put you in the trunk to get you there? <laughs> you had to gag me. Oh, I'll go crazy. I'll, I'll be frothing at the mouth. No, It'll be awful. no. Well, that's a, I'm just going to hope that doesn't happen. Where, where is the Alabama State Hospital for the criminally insane? That's where I'll have to then go. Then I'll have someone else drive. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, hey, Dave, who's, uh, uh, no kidding. who's the MVP tonight, Dave? Oh, how do you, how do you pick an all-star game? MVP? I don't know. Geez. I'm just asking just, you to pick one. I'm going to go with Matt Harvey. He's going to pitch three shutout innings as he, as he deserves to do. And okay. uh, he's going to be the MVP. And be therefore, the first the pit- therefore, the National League is winning, by the way, just for the record. And that would be the first pitcher to be MVP since Roger Clemens in 86. I want to go out on a limb and say a first Cardinal home run since Reggie Smith in 74. Who? Any of them, any one of them. I'm going Carlos Beltran, MVP. And they boo no, him. We already right. talked and about this last week. Uh, didn't we talk about Carlos Beltran last week? He's a non-event. He's a non-factor yeah. in the baseball world. MVP. Yeah. New York fans might be joining Brett at the Alabama. Hospital <laughs> <for> <laughs> oh, beautiful. Dave Chase, Thank you, always a pleasure. Thank you much for joining us today. We'll talk again later in the week when we uh, get this – Stretch run started. Well, let me know when there's any breaking news out of the SEC media days. No one in the world was talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so we will try. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you, yeah. guys. Thank you. Dave Chase joining us, Commissioner of the uh, Prospect League. We will take a break. When we come back, we'll wrap up this edition. Efficient Stats, live from SEC Media Days, Sports 56, 87.7 FM. Sports 56 Middays with Greg Gaston and Eli Silvoy. Monday through Friday from 11 to 1 on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. I'll bet you and everyone you know would love to be driving a new Ford right now. Well, here you go. The best Ford place in the country just got bigger and better. Our own country Ford in South Haven has hundreds more new Ford cars and trucks on the lot for the biggest and best grand reopening sale ever. F-150s, Explorers, Fusions, Mustangs, Escapes. And this Friday from 1 to 5, you're invited to join us for all the food, prizes, fun, and deals you will only find at Country Ford in South Haven. Up to 12000 off MSRP on a new 2013 F-150. Financing as low as zero for 60. Check out all the new 2014 F-150s in every color, equipped any way you want. July is Country Ford's grand reopening sale and celebration month. And the official ribbon cutting is this Friday at 2. Make any reasonable offer on a Country Ford and they'll take it. 95 East Goodman Road in South Haven or shop online anytime at countryford.com. I'm with John Burgess of the world-famous Rendezvous Restaurant with a bit of a history lesson. Brett, I've spoken about our slaw before. What people don't realize, it's a 100-year-old recipe. Around 1915, my grandfather had a hot dog stand on Beale Street. That's the exact same slaw we use today that he used to serve on his hot dogs. He also had a diner across the street from St. Joseph Hospital where he sold the slaw. People always ask me, where did he get the recipe for it? And I really don't know. I tell people he got it from the coleslaw ferry. But now, 100 years later, we've come full circle. Here we are serving our products at the FedEx Forum, and on our barbecue sandwiches, of course, we serve our famous coleslaw. Brett, our coleslaw is available along with our barbecue seasoning and sauce at all the local Kroger stores. If they don't have it, please ask your grocer to stock it, or if not, call me at 901-523-2746. Our coleslaw is great on a barbecue sandwich, but Brett, 100 years later, it's still a great slaw for a hot dog. There's only one rendezvous, and it's in the alley in downtown Memphis. Hello, this is Greg Hines from Windyke Country Club, a locally owned full service country club that served the Memphis area for over 50 years. And it continues to improve and get better every year. 
Windyke offers more golf than anyone in town. 36 holes of championship golf, an 18-hole executive par 3, a driving range, and a short game practice area. In fact, Windyke is known for some of the best greens in the area. What you may not know is that we strive to be as family-friendly as possible. We have activities for men, women, and children. These activities include our indoor-outdoor tennis courts, an excellent swimming program, expanded dining options, and an award-winning golf and tennis professional staff that can help anyone from the tiniest of tigers to the pros that just need a few pointers. Memberships are between $90 and $320 a month. No assessments, no minimums, and hey, if you're under 34, we have a great new membership just for you. For more information, call 901-754-1888 or go online to windite.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. We thank Hugh Freeze for joining us early in the program. Steve Spurrier just talking about Hugh Freeze. Freeze actually said earlier to the media, he wears a visor all the way back when he was a high school coach. He wore the visor because he wanted to be like Steve Spurrier. Spurrier told about that today, says... We both play golf, we both wear visors, and we both call plays. How can you not like Hugh Freeze? They both play <laughs> golf well. They both call plays well. Oh, my goodness. He said, last year Ole Miss was 2-10. and 10. Freeze done a great job. How can you not like him? I'm trying to remember the look Spurrier worked in the USFL with the Bandits. Was it baseball cap or visor? And I remember uh, some at Florida that it would be cap, not always visor. Huh. But when you, as Ron Higgins dubbed him, Darth Visor, yep. not Darth Baseball Cap. It's been on. We want to thank our sponsors. Uh, it's been a great first day uh, here of SEC Media Days. If you missed anything throughout the day, you can catch it at the website, sports56whbq.com. Thanks to FRS, Power Sports, Bonnie for Life, Dilday TV, Cougar Chemical, and the title sponsor of this program, AutoNation GMC, Sales Service Parts and Collision Center, 2621 South Menden Hall is where you can find AutoNation GMC. It's an AutoNation company. It's the world's largest auto re retailer, over 250 dealerships. And AutoNation GMC Menden Hall, they rank number one in all of AutoNation in sales and service, customer satisfaction. Plus, great selection of new GMCs. They have a great selection of pre-owned and GM certified pre-owned as well. We are in the all-new sleek terrain. And it is sleek. It is a sleek-looking vehicle. And the navigation system is spectacular. You had me almost down to the tenth of a mile. I did. I did. And then I had to stop because I had to use a restroom. <laughs> but then I gave you an updated time. So we were finally, it was a great navigation system, and uh, we had a great smooth ride on down in uh, our new uh, terrain uh, that we used here for SEC Media Days. We thank AutoNation GMC Mendenhall for it. Uh, being a part of the AutoNation gives them access to one of the largest pre-owned inventories in all of the country. Friendly, helpful staff, and they satisfy the customer. Stop by AutoNation GMC Mendenhall. Uh, quickly, uh, before we get out of here, another note today, a couple of notes. One being Mike Miller, amnestied by the Miami Heat. I know there's been a lot of Mike Miller love being thrown out there on the Twitter. If he clears waivers and you can get him for, I don't know, a million and a half and he wants to come back to Memphis and play basketball in Memphis, sure, I say why not. I think it's a no-risk signing. I'm, I, I'm not thrilled like a lot of people are showing their love about getting Mike Miller today because I, Mike Miller's hurt. Mike Miller didn't play a lot this year for the Miami Heat. Boy, that back. I mean, you could easily see next year he plays in seven games. Yeah. I mean, if you want to play him like the Miami Heat played him and not play him at all until you get to the playoffs, all right, that's fine. That's great. Here's a million and a half to not play. If you want him to play a lot and you want him to shoot a lot, well, I think you're asking a lot of a guy who hasn't been able to get through a season without being injured. So limited role, come in, make a couple shots, all right. You want him to have a shooter's role? This is our savior. This is the shooter that we needed. Oh, God, we're never going to get to the Western Conference Finals without a shooter, even though they just did. Uh, he's not your guy. No, and, and during the finals, he, he looked old and decrepit. Oh, he, he looked, looked good old and decrepit, though. He, 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 <laughs> he did, but it looked like it was painful for him to move around. Yeah. Well, it is. It is. It is. And uh, that's where he's at in his career right now. Well, but he's had that... that 
But if you could do it, I don't think there's a risk. I mean, heck, if you, if you sign him for a million and a half, he comes in and he can't even get through training camp. All right, well, you know, he retires and still gets his money from Miami. Whatever. He, he's had that grumpy back for a long time. Yeah, and it's not my money anyway. Yeah, give him a million and a half. If you cut him, you cut him, you just lost a million and a half. That's all. <laughs> not think, my money. You think they like to hear that? No. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to and, see what happens they, there. But it does make sense. I mean, you know, with Mike being from, well, played a long time in Memphis. And they have certainly, to be that uh, group. fans love him. They have to be that money conscious. Most teams yeah. do. Yeah. Especially when you're in Memphis and you're also thinking about... You know, Everybody can't be Prokhorov. No. And you want to tie up a million and a half to a guy that, if he is hurt all year, well, now you have even less money to go get somebody. So, something to keep in mind. That's going to do it for us here this afternoon. Uh, tomorrow, another busy day. Six teams. My goodness. How are we going to get them all in? That's a lot of talking. We'll do our best. Texas A&M, Kentucky, Mississippi State, Tennessee, Auburn, and Arkansas. All in tomorrow. Here in Hoover, Alabama, at the Winfrey Hotel. That does it for us here this afternoon. We thank all our guests for stopping by and joining us. If you missed any of the interviews, go to sports56whbq.com. Speaking of Ole Miss, Bo Wallace joins Greg Gaston tomorrow on Middays. Join us tomorrow at 3 for Bash and Stats. I'm Fish. Have a great night. Keep it here on Sports 56, 87.7 FM. This is Sheldon Rosengarten with Mark Bensdorf, the oldest real estate company in town. It may be the oldest, but we have the absolute most up-to-date technology which means more exposure for your home when you sell. With over 90% of the home buyers using the Internet when searching for a home, being at the front of the pack in technology means you are also in front of the buyer's eyes. When you combine my highly successful strategic marketing program and the very latest in technology with our large nationwide relocation and referral network, it's a winning combination and can mean the difference in whether you sell or sit. So if you're thinking of selling, make sure and talk to two to three real estate brokers and make sure that I am one of them. Find out the difference and why your home is in a better position to sell quickly and possibly for more with me. Take a moment, make the call or the email, Sheldon Rosengarten, 682-1868 or through my website, memphisrelocate.com. That's 682-1868 or memphisrelocate.com. By now you know Dixie Pickers in Collierville should be your one-stop shop for fine southern apparel and classic sports memorabilia. Come in today and visit Dixie Pickers' new location, which is four times larger than the original store and located at 99 North Center Street and still in the heart of the Collierville Town Square. Come in and check out their Yeti coolers. Wildly stronger, keeps ice longer. It's the core you've always wanted and the last one you'll ever need. They're dry ice compatible and certified mare resistant. Dixie Pickers also has Costa Del Mar sunglasses. Costa sunglasses glasses see what's out there go to dixie pickers and check out the new styles for 2013 dixie pickers also carry southern point mojo sportswear true flies jack black and much much more dixie pickers vintage finds and fresh designs for southern gentlemen dixie pickers is your home for vintage vinyl comics trading cards and much more open monday through saturday from 10 to 6 call them today at 316-5391 or stay up to date with their inventory by liking dixie pickers on facebook your home for the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis and 87.7 FM. Get ready for the Midsummer Classic. I'm Carrie, Karen Kay. First pitch about one hour away. It's the 84th edition of the All-Star Game at City Field. AL versus the NL. First pitch again coming up shortly. Watch out for it because home field advantage is on the line for the World Series. Check in with Toronto's Jose Batista on his AL teammate, Orioles, Chris Davis. I can hope that he does the best that he can do because obviously that don't mean that his team will, will beat us and uh, win more games and be on top of us in the standings. But he's done a remarkable job uh, so far, and we'll see what he can do if he can finish off strong. And, of course, tonight he will be cheering for Chris Davis. Your pitching matchup, it's Tigers. Max Scherzer, he gets the start for the AL. Mets will Matt Harvey gets the nod for the National League. This is the fourth time a Met has started an All-Star game at pitcher, joining uh, Dwight Gooden and Tom Seaver. Major League Baseball Executive Vice President Joe Torre says that baseball will expand instant replay for umpire calls next season, something to look forward to. And the Players Association has made an announcement. They say any suspensions coming from baseball's latest drug investigation likely won't be served until next year. Former MVPs Alex Rodriguez and Ryan Braun are among the players 
under investigation. British Open starts Thursday. Tiger Woods has been practicing early, says his elbow is doing just fine. This Open will be his 17th. The elbow did cause him some problems during the U.S. Open at Marion last month. Texas A&M quarterback and Heisman winner Johnny Manziel apologized to coaches for his behavior at the Manning Academy this past weekend. He didn't finish his scheduled stay, citing dehydration and illness. Some reports say he was out partying the night before. Listen on your smartphone by downloading the NBC Sports Radio app at the iTunes Store. I'm Karen Kay, and this is NBC Sports Radio. This is NBC Sports Radio. All sports, all the time. Where every day is game day. And now, John Stash Hour. Uh uh uh. Jason Page on your radio in for Stash, who's at the All Star game. How you doing, America? 855 323 4NBC. 855 323 4622. I am on Twitter at the back page also could get us via the o'reilly auto parts ask the pros email inbox ask the pros at nbc sports radio.com that's ask the pros at nbc sports radio.com you ask questions we throw them out to our pros and everybody's happy we'll do a lot of baseball uh in this first hour in fact john stash hour who took the night off to go and Occupy a seat in media row at the All Star Game. He will he will join us coming up in about thirty minutes. I just love irritating people. I I just live to needle needle. Uh, Stash will join us from City Field, and we'll talk with him. So uh, we'll do that coming up in about thirty minutes. Uh, let me start out this way in Major League Baseball. We've got essentially uh, two and a half months remaining in Major League Baseball's regular season. So I want to throw the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be very simple tonight. I'm a simple man. I'm. Not, I'm not very bright. I'm a very simple man. So I'm gonna throw it out to you this way, and I want to have a conversation here in this opening half hour of the show at eight five five three two three four NBC from anywhere in America. You can call us, and frankly, anywhere in the world if you if you're listening to us on the iPhone or the Droid app or online at NBCSportsRadio.com. Where we are in Major League Baseball right now. Look at the standings. Look who's in first place in the lead for the wild card as, as we get set in, you know, for the for the All-Star game tonight, which, granted, we'll talk about it on some level because it's on during my show, but at the same time, I'm not going to go gaga about it. I know it decides who has home field advantage, but sometimes I think that's a little overrated in itself. Right now, wild cards. Tampa Bay, Texas, and the American League. Baltimore's two back, the Yankees, and Cleveland are three back. Uh, but Cleveland's also nipping at the heels of the Tigers uh, in the Central. We'll get to that in a second. In the National League, it's Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, and then everybody's way behind. As of right now, I still believe three teams are going to come out of that National League Central. You're going to get three playoff teams out of one division um, because it's that good. You know, As much as we talk about the AL East, that top three in the National League Central, um, few can rival that right now. Then you look at your division leaders. Boston, two and a half up on Tampa Bay, who had an amazing start to the month of July. Detroit, a game and a half up on Cleveland, as we mentioned. You have Oakland, two up on Texas. National League, Atlanta, six up on Washington. Pittsburgh, one back of St. Louis in the Central. That's why I believe all three of those teams are, are getting in. Uh, and then in the National League West, you have Arizona. If we fast forward about 10 weeks from now, well, you got to go a little further, maybe 13 weeks from now. You've had a first half of the whole season to look at it. Who are we looking at in the World Series? I want your World Series pick tonight. 855-323-4NBC. 855-323-4622. You can tweet at me as well, at the back page. Now, who do I think is going to wind up there? I know people are going to say I'm nuts. Um, but last year I made this call with Oakland when they were about a, I don't know, they, I think they were a game under 500 in the American League West, and it was right at the All-Star break, and I'll never forget it. So I was on a New York sports talk station, and everybody called in and said I was wacky. I said, Oakland? 
is going to make the postseason. I said Oakland is, is going to wind up making Everybody thought I was out of my mind when I said it. I'm going to give you a prediction that is akin to that tonight on the show. The Dodgers are winning the NL West. And I know a lot of people are still high on Arizona. And a lot of people might think I'm high for taking the Dodgers. But I love the Dodgers right now in the National League West. I love the way they're playing. Hanley Ramirez. What Yasiel Puig has done beyond anything else for that team is Yasiel Puig has lit a fire under everybody else. Because people start to realize he might take my spot. You know, everybody starts to realize just how tenuous it is, no matter how big a star you are, no matter how much money you make, how tenuous life in the major leagues can be. Because a Yasiel Puig comes up, and all of a sudden, if you're injured and you come back, you may not have a job. And everybody starts to elevate their game a little bit. It's kind of, I, I like it a little bit, you know, when, when somebody like this comes up, uh, to what happened in golf. You know, Tiger Woods was good for so long, and Tiger was dominant for so long that everybody started to realize, if we don't up our game, um, we're all just going to get lapped, and it's going to become Tiger's tour, and it's going to have nothing to do with anything that, that we do. And everybody started to elevate their game on the PGA Tour. Well, something similar to that has happened with the Dodgers, where everybody has started to realize, you know, this guy's making all of us look bad. He's carrying us right now. And that's had a real impact on that team. So I'm going to tell you now, the Dodgers are going to win the NL West. I will bank on it. And if I'm wrong, we can come back here in 13 weeks and you can all laugh at me. Guastamaki, and note the time. 7.08 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday night, July 16th. Dodgers are going to win that division. Now three teams are going to come out of the Central. And frankly, you know they could be the three best teams in all of the National League. But if the Dodgers get into the postseason, that's a team nobody will want to play. Because at some point in time, guys play to the back of their baseball cards. And they got a lot of talent on that team that right now still isn't playing to the back of their baseball cards. And if they do, and they just happen to do it at the right time in the postseason, well, some special things could happen in Los Angeles. Atlanta's very good. I love Atlanta. Um... You know, they are one of the most well-rounded teams in the National League, as is St. Louis. But I'm telling you, I see something very special in this Dodgers team right now. Jason Page sitting in for John Stash Hour, 855-323-4NBC, 855-323-4622. You can tweet at me as well, at the back page. Give me your World Series pick as we enter the All-Star game tonight. I'd love to get your thoughts on it. Go over to the American League. And I know everybody likes Boston, but the fact of the matter is, Boston is this year what the Yankees were last year. The Red Sox and Yankees basically flipped spots. The Yankees riddled with injuries. Last year, Boston riddled with injuries. Our own Bobby Valentine, you know, some may agree or disagree as to whether or not he should have lost his job in Boston. The fact of the matter is, nobody was going to win with that team and the amount of injuries they sustained last year. So we don't really know how good Bobby Valentine would have been with that team last year with the amount of injuries they sustained. But that just goes to show you the job that Joe Girardi has done this year for this team to be seven games over 500 with the amount of injuries they've had. I have said this, and people might think I'm nuts. This is the best managerial job he's done. With the exception of his first year in Florida with the Marlins, as a Yankee manager, because up until this point, he hasn't had to really coach up guys. Um, he hasn't really had to fiddle with rosters and put out six different shortstops. You know, a zillion different third basemen, a different outfield every night. Sign guys, wave guys, bring guys up. It, they haven't had to do that during this era of Yankee baseball. And Joe Girardi's done his best managerial job as the Yankee skipper this season. He still does things that drive me nuts. If you watch the team every night, that's going to happen. But overall, a very good job by Joe Girardi. Still, Boston is this year what the Yankees were last year. They could score a ton. Their bullpen is crap. And I think their starting pitching will be a liability in the postseason. So while Boston might be in the division lead, and they may or may not win the division, 
barring a major collapse, they're going to make the playoffs. But you never know. It could happen. Crazy things happen. But David Ortiz is having an amazing year. Uh, I'll say Boston makes the postseason. They're not a World Series threat to me. I guess you could say anybody who makes the playoffs in baseball is a World Series threat because it's not, you know, the playoffs aren't structured the way they are in the NHL. Best of sevens, you know, 15 series. It takes a zillion years to, to do it. It's, it's not like that. Detroit is good. Bullpen issues. You know, it's funny. I think there are a lot more solidified teams in the National League, balanced teams that you like when you get to the playoffs and when you get into a World Series situation than there are in the American League, where you're either pitching heavy or you're offensive heavy. You know, you look at the top teams in the AL. Detroit right now, very good offensively. Boston, very good offensively. And while both teams have a couple of guys at the top of the rotation you like, they've both got bullpen issues. And that's why you look at a team like Oakland. Because the A's are balanced. Oakland is a balanced team. They get into the playoffs, and I expect they will. This is no fluke anymore. If Oakland gets there, that's a very dangerous team. Could have an all-California World Series. Wouldn't shock me. What do you think? 855-323-4NBC. 855-323-4622. You could tweet me your thoughts at the back page. Give me your World Series prediction. 13 weeks from now or so, we'll be getting ready for the World Series. Tell me who you think will be in that series. 855-323-4NBC with Jason Page sitting in. We'll do some more baseball on the other side. It's the John Stash Hour Show, NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com. Don't go anywhere. There's always more on the way on NBC Sports Radio. Sports 56 Middays with Greg Guest and Anil Isovoy. 11 to 1 weekdays here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Hi, Tom Bodet. Motel 6 is always thinking of ways to make it easier to book a clean, comfortable room for a great low rate. And this is the first test of our reservation by telepathy system. Commencing now. Now. Wait a minute. Now. Well, you can still call 1-800-4-MOTEL-6, book online at motel6.com, or with our cool new app on your tablet or smartphone. I'm Tom Bodet for Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. Fram knows there are smooth roads, dirt roads, roads less traveled, and roads begging to be driven. Fram knows there are fast drivers, cautious drivers, drivers with a destination, turn right ahead, and drivers who are lost. That's why no matter what you drive, no matter how you drive, no matter what oil you use, there's a Fram oil filter that helps keep your engine healthier longer. Find your Fram oil filter at your local automotive store. And now another OTC stock market spotlight for investors. Today we feature Novus Robotics, ticker symbol NRBT. Novus Robotics supplies components and robotic modules to the world's top 10 automotive suppliers. They have a sizable revenue stream and great potential for growth. Talk to your broker about Novus Robotics or enter ticker symbol NRBT. That's ticker symbol NRBT. See dnrtechnology.com for full disclaimer. It was the moment I realized I was about to lose my job. I found myself searching for pills instead of just being with my family. At that moment, I finally decided to get help for my addiction to opioids. The prescription painkillers. At TurnToHelpNow.com, you'll learn that opioid dependence is a real medical condition and that there are different ways to get help, including those in a private setting, without the need for daily visits. That moment led me to TurnToHelpNow.com. Make now your moment. Visit TurnToHelpNow.com today. Melting polar ice was a dirty look. Shrinking glaciers, a nudge. Dying forests, they were a tap on the shoulder. We got a finger in our chest from the rising sea level. And a sharp poke in the ribs from recent wildfires in Alaska. Then dying coral reefs and eroding coastlines pushed us. Hard. The drowned polar bears, that was a shove. Melting permafrost. That was a slap. Rising ocean temperatures and extreme weather. An uppercut. Then record-breaking heat waves hit us right where it hurts. 
Has it occurred to anyone that maybe the Earth is trying to get our attention? We can still reduce greenhouse gas pollution before it's too late. To find out how, go to fightglobalwarming.com. Brought to you by Environmental Defense, the Robertson Foundation, and the Ad Council. Hello? Erica, got your sweats on, girl? Today's speed walking day. Oh, I gotta take my mom to the doctor. Erica, your mom is in Georgia. <sighs> Dorothy, <sighs> you're breaking up. <sighs> Did I mention that we'll be slowing down when we pass that basketball court where the fine brothers play? I heard that. I knew you would. Just give me a minute to put on some makeup. <laughs> Sorry, you're breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> so Even when exercise is the last thing on your mind, don't give in to excuses. Your sisters can provide the motivation and support you need to eat right, get active, and reduce your risk of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. With the power of sisterhood, there's just no excuse not to live a healthier life. For more information, go to everydaychoices.org. Brought to you by the American Cancer Society, the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association, the Ad Council, and this station. Half of young Americans can't locate economic powers like Japan and India. 20% can't even find the Pacific Ocean. Without geography, our children aren't ready for the world. Geography is everywhere. It's incredible creatures. Rhythm. Fashion. Flavor. It's economics. And politics. It's change. Understanding connections between people and places is critical in the 21st century. That's why we created MyWonderfulWorld.org to give our kids the power of global knowledge. Go to MyWonderfulWorld.org for your free parent and teacher action kits. Because kids who understand our world today can succeed in it tomorrow. If a headache has ever thrown a painful wrench into your plans, you're not alone. A recent online survey conducted by the National Headache Foundation found 59% of respondents miss work or other activities because of headaches at least once a month. But there is hope. The NHF offers 12 tips for a headache-free year to help improve the quality of life for the 45 million people in the U.S. who suffer from headaches. At work, give yourself 15 extra minutes to get to appointments and use a non-glare computer screen to keep the daily grind under control. At home, get up 15 minutes earlier and prepare for your day the night before to make the morning rush a little less stressful. Finally, don't forget the importance of playtime. Be sure to pencil some into your schedule and never underestimate the power of deep breathing. With a complete list of tips or for more information about headaches, call the National Headache Foundation at 888-NHF-5552 or visit www.headaches.org. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? Yeah, get used to it. There's a new kid in town. Every day is game day. Call us at 855-323-4NBC. This is NBC Sports Radio. We roll along with the John Stash Hour Show on NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com. Jason Page sitting in for Stash. 855-323-4NBC. 855-323-4622. On Twitter, at the back page. At the back page. World Series will start, I don't know, about 13 weeks from, from now. And we went through some of the teams in the American League and National League. I want to get your thoughts. Who's playing in the World Series? You've had a whole first half to look at these teams. And I think by the time you get to this point, you have a sense for who is who. I mean, you are what you are. The, the beauty of the Major League Baseball season, and I have always believed this, people will always talk about you know teams who miss out by a game at the end of the season. Um, you'll always hear those sorts of things. The Major League Baseball season, more than any other sport, whoever's in the postseason belongs there. It is the ultimate grind. 
162 games. So if you check out for a game, you know, when we're 80, 90, 100 games in, game number 50 in front of 6,000 people uh, in Miami at a Marlins game, if you check out that night and lose to the Marlins and you don't make the postseason by a game, that's a you problem. That's on you. So people who at the end of the season, oh, they lost out by a game. We need another wild card. I mean, no. You lose out by a game, it means go back and look at the season. Find where you checked out for a night. 855-323-4NBC. Um, let me go to, let me see, David in Miami has a pick. For, oh, so he knows what it's like, Six or 7,000 fans at, at a Marlins game. David, you're on with Jason Page on NBC Sports Radio. Good evening. Hey, man, how you doing tonight? You're doing great. What's up? I was going to give you my World Series prediction. All right, load it up. Let's go. Well, in the National League, I would love to see the Braves. Uh, you mentioned the Braves. And you know what? Uh, given the first half of the season where the Upton brothers played like they've played, uh, they're still scoring a ton of runs. they got a decent rotation. they got probably, arguably, the best bullpen in uh, all of Major League Baseball. So that's what I'm pulling for. But unfortunately, I think St. Louis will squeak it out. Seems like every year the St. Louis Cardinals find themselves in a World Series. So you think St. Louis is there, and who do you think they play in the American League? Well, this is my surprise team. I think it's going to be the Tampa Bay Rays, primarily on pitching. Uh, you know, this year, first half of the season, they've had a ton of pitching issues. You mentioned it in, uh, in your monologue uh, a few minutes ago. They started the month of July hot as could be. Uh, they're starting to get some of that pitching back. Price went down, came out, went out for a little while. He seems to have his game back. Archer, they brought him up from uh, AAA. The guy's pitching the lights out. When they get Alex Cobb back, um, that just solidifies that rotation. I realize they'll have to figure out who to send down. I, I think that Hernandez will find himself gone uh, once that happens. They've got a strong little relief. Fernando Rodney seems to have put it back together from a closer standpoint. Yeah. And this year, first time since 2008, they actually have some offense. They're yeah. Four, four and a half runs a game. They do. David in Miami, I like it. So I, look, I don't know if I don't know if it's going to be Tampa, but your your St. Louis call uh, in the National League is a sound one. Appreciate the call. All right, thanks, man. Good stuff from David. Here's the problem with Tampa. Okay, weak schedule to finish out the first half. Okay? Here's who they beat up on in the month of July. Houston, the White Sox, Minnesota, and Houston. That is a lot to do with how this team finished out the month of July. I contend that by the end of July, in the first week of August, and right around the trade deadline, that team's going to know if it's a buyer, a seller, a real contender or not. Because as easy as they had it going into the All-Star break, it gets awful difficult coming out. At Toronto, at Boston, at the Yankees to start the second half. You're going to find out pretty fast if Toronto's a contender or a pretender by the time you get to Sunday night, July 28th, when they wrap up a series with the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. And frankly, you might be saying the same thing about the Yankees at the end of that series as to whether or not they're a contender or a pretender. And then it doesn't even get easy. After that, it doesn't get easy for Toronto either, uh, for Tampa Bay either. They're home for Arizona, home for San Francisco, at Arizona, at the Dodgers. So by Sunday, August 11th, you're in a pretty good sense for where Tampa is. 855-323-4NBC. On Twitter, I'll get to a couple of those in a second, at the back page. AutoZone awarding the AutoZone In The Zone Player of the Year Award to players who are in the zone all season long. Now you, the fans, you got to decide who's the AutoZone In The Zone Athlete of the Year. NBCSportsRadio.com. Go there now. NBCSportsRadio.com slash AutoZone to vote today for the auto parts, accessories, and advice you need. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very intriguing to me to see where Tampa is when we get to the trade deadline. And there's, I'm telling you, there's going to be 16 or 17 teams likely 
between 15 and 17 teams will still be in the hunt at the trade deadline. This could be a very volatile trade deadline. With the amount of teams in contention right now. I mean, you look at, go ahead and look at the standings. Boston's in it, Tampa's in it, Baltimore's in it, the Yankees are in it. I'm going to say Toronto's not in it right now. They could get on a run. I, you know, they're one thirteen out of 15 stretch from being back in the wild card race. And with the talent on that team, it's conceivable. But for now, we're going to keep them on the outside. Four teams there. Two in the Central. That's six. Oakland, Texas in the West. That's eight teams right there. That's eight teams in the American League. Go to the National League. Real quick here. Uh, Atlanta. I'll keep Washington in. I'll keep the Phillies in. No, I'm not going to keep the Phillies in. Can't do it. Sorry. Uh, Atlanta, Washington, that's two. St. Louis, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, that's five. And Arizona, you can put four teams in from the West. you got 17 teams right now. At the All-Star game, seven teams that could wind up in the postseason. 17 teams. Nine plus eight. 17. It's going to be a very volatile trade deadline. John Stashauer usually hosts this show. Instead, he's at the All-Star Game. We'll talk to him from City Field next with Jason Page sitting in NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com. You're listening to NBC Sports Radio on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. This is your NBC Sports Radio update. Midsummer. Classic 30 minutes away, 84th edition of the All-Star Game at City Field. AL versus the NL. First pitch coming up. Your pitching matchup, Detroit Tigers. Max Scherzer, he gets the start for the American League. Mets' Matt Harvey gets the nod for the National League. British Open starts Thursday. Tiger Woods has been practicing early. He says his elbow is just fine. Now, this Open will be Tiger's 17th. The elbow did cause... Tigers some problems during the U.S. Open at Marion last month. News out of the NBA, the Miami Heat of Wade veteran guard Mike Miller via the amnesty provision. Moves going to save the Heat nearly $17 million in luxury tax. And six-man award winner Nick J.R. Smith had surgery on his left knee. He's going to be out three to four months. Things are getting a little sticky because last week he re-signed with the Knicks four years, $24 million. Karen Kay, NBC Sports Radio. Head into the Home Depot for big savings on simple updates, like this small project. Add a fresh splash of color with Glidden Premium Interior Paint. The big value? It starts at just $18.94 a gallon, a new lower price. Now's the time to see how a little color can go a long way. One of many ways to make a big difference for less during the Small Projects Big Values event going on now. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. U.S. Only see store for details. And now another OTC stock market spotlight for investors. Today we feature Novus Robotics, ticker symbol NRBT. Novus Robotics supplies components and robotic modules to the world's top 10 automotive suppliers. They have a sizable revenue stream and great potential for growth. Talk to your broker about Novus Robotics or enter ticker symbol NRBT. That's ticker symbol NRBT. See dnrtechnology.com for full disclaimer. Com. The Memphis Redbirds are back in action and waving you home to AutoZone Park this summer. We're home this week with more fireworks, giveaways, and affordable family fun, and tickets starting as low as $6. See the future stars of the St. Louis Cardinals right here in Memphis for less than the cost of a movie. So call the Redbirds at 901-721-6000 or visit us online at memphisredbirds.com for tickets today. Come home this summer and spend some time with the Memphis Redbirds. I'll bet you didn't know the Bontan Restaurant is the second oldest restaurant in Memphis. Now, it's been closed for a little bit, but it's back. It's reopened, and it is serving up the best breakfast in town. You know the old Bontan on Monroe. Well, guess what? Now, open for dinner. And I got to tell you something else. They've redone it. It's so cool inside, and the food is just as good. Start with the biscuits. You'll love their little tater tots. And then get ready for a spectacular dinner menu. Then I want to tell you about what they have downstairs. They have this new room. It looks like you're sort of going into a 50s place. But it is so full of atmosphere. It is perfect for rehearsal dinners, little awards banquets, 
just absolutely the place to be. Check it out. The Bonton is back. Best breakfast in the city. And now open for dinner. The Bonton. So I was on a quest for a magical drink. You know that one in all the stories? I climb mountains and cross deserts, sail through raging storms, and then... What you seek is the new blueberry pomegranate smoothie from McCafe. Oh, man. Didn't even have to leave the neighborhood. McCafe presents the new blueberry pomegranate smoothie, made with a luscious blend of fruit and a refreshing splash of pomegranate juice. Ah, paradise. There's always something new to love from McCafe. At participating McDonald's. All right, guys, time to make some decisions that will affect your entire football season. Are you going to fall for the game of the week or the year or the decade from somebody who lies about their 80% win rate, starts off talking a lot of smack, but disappears about two-thirds of the way through the season? Someone who promises a whole lot of free picks and then starts their high-pressure sales routine. Somebody who doesn't even use their real name. How about going with somebody you know and trust, a rain man in all-star sports? Our first 15 special is underway. The first 15 customers who sign up get season football, college and pro, and season basketball, college and pro, $1,500. Total cost. And you get every play we make, no exceptions, 10 star plays included. This year, late money updates will be texted to our season customers. Call us at 461 4600 or check out the specials at therainman.com. Our 36th football season is coming up. We want you to be part of it. Imagine living in a world where you feel it's better to hide from the truth than face reality. Where it's easier to bite your tongue than speak your mind. Where you gladly give up your freedom because acting on your own is too scary. And where avoiding conflict, no matter how unpleasant things may be, is easier than embracing change. It's scary, but it's real. And it affects millions of us every year because this is what it can feel like to live with an alcoholic. Anger, fear, embarrassment, hopelessness. But there is a way out. We're Al-Anon family groups and we know what it's like. To locate an Al-Anon or al group in your community, call 888-4-AL-ANON or visit al To help them, you have to help yourself first. They call, send letters, email, and visit your home. They're not friends or family. They're con artists, scammers, and criminals. In times like these, it's important to learn how to protect yourself. Credit card schemes, bogus investment opportunities, and free vacation scams are just a few ways that today's criminals target you and your family. Protect yourself. Never give anyone your social security number, credit card, or bank account information unless you initiated the call. Stay informed of current scams by contacting your attorney general's office and Better Business Bureau. If you're a victim, reporting the con to the local authorities will prevent others from suffering the same fate. To learn more about how to keep your family safe from con artists and scams, visit ncpc.org. That's ncpc.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. This is John Stash Hour. Every story. Every day, this is our game. 24-7, NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com. Can baseball get smart and just figure it out? We'll get to that coming up in about 15 minutes on the John Stash Hour Show with Jason Page. Sitting in for Stash. 855-323-4NBC. You can tweet at me as well. At the back page, World Series prediction from Chris in Las Vegas says Dodgers and A's. You know what, Chris? You're a smart guy. That's kind of where I'm leaning right now. People are going to think I'm nuts. Maybe Stash thinks I'm nuts. Joins us from City Field right now on the hotline. Stash, am I nuts? What do you think? Uh, Little Dodgers A's? I I picked the Dodgers, Jason, at the start of the year. So it was, was, I was looking like I was nuts for a while, but, uh, 
you know, so I'll say that I went with Tigers uh, in the AL that I think I've underachieved, but, um, you know, I'll stick with them. All right, you'll stick with that. How's the press box food, by the way? Well, the food was good. There is, you know, the issue, I and mean, I'm sure this is experience is covering events. Uh, you know, radio sometimes is kind of the low on the total pole, at least if you're not like, you know, rights holders like our friends at Dial Global and football and stuff like that. So, you know, my original seat, I think I could see the right fielder, <laughs> and, that, and, that's about, and that's about it. But I uh, somehow have stumbled upon uh, a really nice seat that left the line, although I am just, you know, it just could happen at any moment where an usher is going to tap me on my shoulder and say, excuse me. <laughs> You're not supposed to be here. So uh, if I get, you know, led away during the course of this interview, that'll be why. So you're outside? I actually am. If you can uh. hear a little uh, ambiance. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is hot. I understand that. But I'd rather be hot and be able to watch the game than be air-conditioned and, you know, say, you know, have no idea what, what's going on. What's the prevailing theme there, John? I mean, you've been there last couple of days. I, I don't know if you were there yesterday. I know you're there today. What seems to be the prevailing theme amongst the players you talk to right now as we get into the All Star break, as we get to the All Star game? Well, um, you know, I was not here last night, but you know, the, the guys that I saw, I saw that some interviews um, before the game that we will uh, air probably tomorrow. Uh, if I'm, you know, if I'm allowed back on tomorrow, I don't know maybe, <laughs> you know, but. Um, and, you know, I, I try to talk to some of those, you know, obviously, as you know, a big crowd around Mariano and, you know, the bigger names. Uh, you know, I like talking to the guys who, for them anyway, this really is, it really does mean something. And they're really proud to be here and um, they're excited. And, you know, I, I, I think that if you've been coming 10 years in a row, I can understand why it's just, you know, no big deal. But for those guys, you know, it's, it's a great thrill. I mean, I thought Steve Dalbar, the Blue Jays reliever, who got the write-in vote. I mean, the guy was the guy was a substitute teacher two years ago, three years ago, and now he's, he's in the All Star team. So it's, that's those kinds of stories I think. Yeah, it is pretty amazing when you when you think about a, a story like that, sort of a rags to riches sort of story, and, and being a substitute teacher. Trust me, uh, you know that's that's one of those things where it's very tenuous. So you know, a story like Dalbar is kind of cool. Um, and John, how much is the specter of the performance dancing drug suspensions? How much is that looming over this game? And what are players saying about it? I don't know if they want to talk about it, but I mean, look, the place will be packed tonight. Um, I don't, I don't think any fan gave up their ticket because some guys might get suspended, and there's some guys in this game tonight who will probably get suspended. There's, there's, well, there's three of them. One of them got injured, but. Um, you know, so what? If you're a baseball fan, and you know you're gonna watch the All Star game, I do it. I do it every year. I think everybody does it. And it's the best All Star game of, in sports. And um, whatever happens, from what from what you hear, it's probably not that the appeals are gonna drag on. Uh, that ovation is not for me, by the way. Uh, <laughs> the, appeal, the appeals will probably drag on. It probably won't happen until next year anyway. So, if anything, this this biogenesis thing might. Might affect next year's All Star Game more than this one. Well, how much? How about amongst the players, though? Are, are any of them talking about it? Was anybody talking about it today? You know, I don't think they want to. Be. Uh, if pressed, they might, but it's certainly not something they they want to talk about. You know, it's, it's the black it's the black eye for the game, and it's, it's interesting when you hear, you know, that apparently the overwhelming majority of players who are now clean now are are upset about this. It's, you know. To give them a bad light. And, you know, back in the day, the true steroid era, when I said you had well over 50% of the players using, I don't think that was the case. Now I think it is. Last one. Amongst the American League players you talked to, um, you know, a sense of pride. I mean, they haven't won this thing in a couple of years. Obviously, you know, getting home field uh, for some of these guys. What does it mean, and, and what were a lot of them saying? I don't know that they play the game any differently because, the winner of that of this game, the team, you know, that wins the Senate has home field advantage. I mean, I don't think they're thinking that way. I think they, they're, you know, if it turns out to be a close game, last year it wasn't. Nationally, it's just in front of five of the first. It's still a close game. I think they're going to try and win. You know, I always, if, if they're going to keep score, 
you might as well try and win. I mean, I try and win when I play uh, pickup basketball. It's the uh, it's why. So, you know, they'll try and win, but it's still an exhibition game. It's still managed like an exhibition game. If it was really meant all that much, they, they wouldn't manage it the way they do. Uh, I'm not a big fan, as I was saying last night, about this whole thing about home field going to the winner, but that's the way it is. That's the way it does stay. Stash at the All-Star game. Enjoy it, my friend. All right, Jason. John Stash Hour at the All-Star game at City Field. Players, I, I have to imagine, you know, all of this looming over the game, even if it's only 20 players and you think of how many players there are in baseball, I'd have to do the math. 30 times 20, whatever. 800 players in Major League Baseball. Sean's pulling out his abacus. Try and figure it out. You know, you got about 900 players, 800 players, whatever it is in Major League Baseball. They have to all be thinking about this PED biogenesis investigation because it's going to affect everybody one way or the other. It's going to either affect somebody you're friends with, a player you know, your team, pennant races, everything. And when will Major League Baseball get it? What am I talking about? Find out next with Jason Page sitting in on the John Stash Hour Show. It's NBC Sports Radio at NBCSportsRadio.com. NBC Sports Radio. This is Lance Bergman of the Texas Rangers, and you're listening to NBC Sports Radio. Sports 56 Middays with Greg Guest and Eli Savoy. 11 to 1 weekdays here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Does it seem like just yesterday you bought that new computer and it was running the speed of light and now a snail could outpace it? The next time you purchase a computer, you won't have this problem. If you buy from Vision, they have managed services, a department that can scan your computer, clean out the junk, monitor your hard drive, defrag the computer and discover and fix problems before you even know about them. They keep it running at the speed of light without ever having to see your data. No, you don't have to take the computer in. They do it remotely. For 599 bucks, you can purchase a brand new computer, i3 processor, 4 gigs of RAM, 500 gig hard drive, DVD burner, 3 year warranty on parts and labor on any vision made laptop or desktop. 15 second average hold time for customer service. Woohoo! And a full year of managed services. Give them a call. Do it now. 877-9-VISION or visioncomputers.com 877-9-VISION Check into, check into cash. Hi, this is Lisa with Check Into Cash. Loyal customers have trusted us for 20 years. Get the cash you need now with our payday advance, even without a checkbook. If you need money now before your next payday, come and see us. It's quick, easy, and confidential. Visit checkintocash.com for the store nearest you. Restrictions apply. Borrowers often use payday loans over a period of months, which can be expensive. Get on down, check into cash. <laughs> The road hates your engine. They are adversaries, enemies, foes. The road will attack your engine with dirt, dust, and grime through your air filter any way it can. Fight back. Reclaim the horsepower the road tries to steal every 12,000 miles. It's easy to change to a Fram air filter that keeps dirt, dust, and grime out of your engine. If it's on the road, there's a Fram that fits. Find your Fram air filter at your local Walmart. With pools, plants, and patios, plus a whole lot more. I'm Michael Hatcher with Michael Hatcher & Associates, now employee-owned, delivering expert landscape design, construction, and horticulture services for almost 30 years. Developing concepts that blend your specific needs and lifestyle with the most progressive technology. After all, that's what we do. Creative people setting the standard. Call our office to schedule an appointment, and let's get started on creating your outdoor living project. Tunica National's legendary three-person scramble is underway. Every Thursday at 5.30, $30 gets you nine holes with a card, free dinner buffet, and a chance to qualify for this year's Tournament of Champions sponsored by the Gold Strike Casino. Each week, all winning teams and all flights qualify, so if you win the second or third flight, your team qualifies for the TOC and the after party at the Gold Strike Casino. Now listen up. This year, both par threes will have a closest to the pin contest, and here's how it works. One lucky winner will win a fantastic prize from Tunica National. The other lucky winner will get a ticket put into an end 
end of the year drawing for a chance to win one of five prizes from a collection of gifts valued at $2,500. So call Tunica National at 866-833-6331. That's 866-TOF1 anytime before 530 every Thursday to get your team entered. So for 30 bucks, you get golf, free dinner, a chance to win great prizes, and each winning team from every flight qualifies for the TOC. Plus the after party at the Gold Strike Casino. Call 866-TOF1 and get your team entered today. Tunica National's three-person scramble is going on right now. Eight, we've worked together for years. Seven, I'm the parking attendant. I park your car every day. One in eight Americans is struggling with hunger. Six, we speak at PTA meetings all the time. Including millions of children and seniors. Five, I went to summer camp with your son last year. Four, I'm your old friend. We went to high school together. Someone you know is in need. Three, I work at the gas station. I pump your gas. Two, I'm your neighbor. Our kids are classmates. Who's the one in eight in your life that needs help? One, we live next door to each other. You can make a difference through Feeding America and its nationwide network of more than 200 food banks. Take action at feedingamerica.org slash one in eight. A public service announcement brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. When crime prevention is your life, your days don't stay quiet for long. What did I tell you? My name? McGruff the Crime Dog. I wear a trench coat. McGruff, I need help. That was a concerned citizen. And boy, did she sound concerned. I'm very concerned. What did I tell you? Someone took out a loan in my name. They're pretending to be me and spending my money. I can't understand It's called identity theft. Happen. And it's growing fast. Safeguard your personal information like your social security, credit card, or bank account numbers. On the phone, online, even around the house, because half of identity theft occurs by someone you think you know. Learn more from the National Crime Prevention Council at ncpc.org. Take it from a gruff. Keep your identity to yourself and uh, take a bite out of crime. A message from this station, the U.S. Department of Justice, Crime Prevention Coalition of America, and the National Crime Prevention Council. I'm getting a catcher's mitt. I'm getting ice skates. I'm getting a jigsaw puzzle. I'm getting dying coral reefs. A blue bicycle. A walkie-talkie. I'm getting a severe drought. Cool black skateboard. I'm getting melted ice caps. A killer heat wave. A shrinking glacier. I'm getting a devastating flood. Adults are generous. We're even giving kids global warming. But it's not too late. We can still reduce greenhouse gas pollution. Go to fightglobalwarming.com. Brought to you by Environmental Defense, the Robertson Foundation, and the Ad Council. Connecting with NBC Sports Radio, just got even easier. Now you can do it through the O'Reilly Auto Parts Ask the Pros in Bots. Just email us at askthepros at NBCSportsRadio.com. Then put our pros to work as they answer your questions on the air. Also, don't forget to download the official NBC Sports Radio app for 24-7 sports coverage. It's all here on NBC Sports Radio. <laughs> John Stash Hour Show, NBC Sports Radio, NBCSportsRadio.com. Jason Page in for Stash. He's at the All-Star Game, reportedly being ushered from his seat that he snuck into that he wasn't supposed to be in. So who knows? He may not even make it through the game. <laughs> he might not even make it to first pitch. 855-323-4 NBC. Our question this hour, with about 13 weeks until the World Series, give me a World Series prediction. From anywhere in America, 855-323-4622. Give me a World Series prediction with 13 weeks until the World Series. And it flies by. It really does. When you realize we're, we're closing in on 100 games in this, um, in this Major League Baseball campaign, or 97 games for some teams, 96 games for some teams. So I want to get your thoughts. I like, you know, we had one guy tweet from uh, Vegas, Chris. Dodgers and A's, I, if I'm telling you, it's a hard thing to predict when you've got 17 teams in the mix right now. But if I had 17 teams in the mix the way we do, 
Uh, Dodgers A's is not out of the realm of possibility. Give me a team that's more top heavy in pitching than with the bats. Because in the postseason, you're talking 2 1 games, 3 2 games, 4 3, you know, 4 2, 3 1. You're not getting slugfests. That's what people missed on the Yankees last year. That team was not built to win in the postseason. And you can make the argument, and this will sound nuts, the Yankees are better built to win a World Series this year than they were last year with scratching out games and having starting pitching and having an, a, a bullpen that most teams in baseball would envy with an all-world closer on the back end. You could argue they're built better this year and just having to scratch out runs and not relying on the long ball better this year than they were last year without Derek Jeter, Alex Rodriguez, Curtis Granderson, Mark Teixeira. Forget the record for a second. It's about being best built for the postseason and the teams you could face there. So Major League Baseball, and I have been arguing this now for about a week and a half, and I was probably the, the first one to argue because I haven't heard anybody say it. And I still, for the life of me, and we'll talk about it with Maury Brown next hour. Why, if you are Major League Baseball, do yourself a favor. If I were Bud Selig, who went on with David Letterman last night, boy, that must have been some of the wittiest TV you've ever seen. Not because of Letterman, who I love, but Bud Selig? He's about as entertaining as paint drying. And my goodness. But if I'm Bud Selig, why are you handing down any suspensions at all before the end of the season? If the process is going to drag out, why saddle a number of teams who have guys in this list, this biogenesis list? If I'm Major League Baseball, why would I punish those teams and the fans with the black cloud of PEDs hanging over, what's going to be an exciting second half of the season. You've got 17 teams. Tell me the last time. And frankly, can we all agree on one thing? If you make the postseason in baseball, you're a World Series threat. That's not the way in the NBA, where there's four or five teams at the start of the season, and it's still the same four or five teams when you start the postseason. You know, the NHL is a little different. You could ride a hot goalie, look at the Kings. You know, you can win from any spot. But baseball, right now, you've got 17 teams. And any of them could wind up in the World Series. Any of them. Because if you get in, ask the Florida Marlins, now the Miami Marlins, you can win. And who, when the postseason started, when the Florida Marlins were in it, would have told you, oh, yeah, Florida's going to wind up the World Series. Yeah. Nobody would have told you that. So if you're Major League Baseball, why are you going to taint? Why are you going to drape over the second half of your season this raggedy, dusty, muddy blanket called the Biogenesis Investigation and all the players saddled um, you know, with cheat on them? throughout the second half of your season. From a PR perspective, it makes no sense. From a selling your game first and foremost perspective, it makes no sense. Should baseball wait until after the season to hand down any punishments? They're not going to, but I want to get your thoughts on whether it would be okay with you if they waited until after the season. Because I don't think the fans care. If they do it now, or they do it at the end of the season. But I guarantee you'd rather it be at the end of the season, because you don't want to hear about this stuff just as much as I don't want to talk about it. 855-323-4NBC. 855-323-4622. And tweet at me, at the back page, should Major League Baseball wait until after the season to hand down the suspensions? Because as was reported today, Michael Weiner, the head of the Players Association, came out and said, you know, there's not going to be any suspensions served during this season. By the time the suspensions are handed out, the appeals process takes place. 
The guys aren't going to serve these suspensions anyway this year. So if you're worried about, well, the integrity of the game, you're going to have cheaters on your team. Um, They're going to be there anyway. Alex Rodriguez, barring some settlement, which the Daily News put out there this weekend, barring some settlement, Alex Rodriguez is going to be playing for the Yankees this year. Ryan Braun's going to be playing for the Brewers this year. And for those of you that say, well, Ryan Braun's team's not even in, you know, in contention. Yeah, but they're playing against teams that are, and he's on the team. So even if they win games because of him against teams that are in contention, he's still influencing the outcome. All of these guys are. Melky Cabrera. You know, Francisco Cervelli, if he returns for the Yankees, on and on. 855-323-4NBC. Give me your thoughts on that. As I said, you could tweet him as well at the back page. You know, it was kind of interesting, too, and I'll get to it on the other side. It was kind of interesting to me to see who was um, who gets all-star bonuses and who doesn't. You would think if you make the all-star team, it would be in your contract that you get a bonus. That's shockingly not the case, I learned. Uh, my friend Robert Rayola, who's at Sports Tax Man. I, I don't know how why I can't remember uh, his Twitter name off. Oh, here it is. Uh, at Sports Tax Man, uh, Robert Rail. If you ever want good stuff with money and sports and how it all interweaves, he, he's great. Um, all right, you know what? Uh, hold Brian to the other side. Uh, I don't want to squeeze him in here, so make sure Brian hangs on. We'll get to him on the other side. 855 uh, nbc And if you're on hold, don't move. I'll get you after the uh, top of the hour. The Jason Page edition of the John Stash Hour Show, built by our friends at the Home Depot. Saving on appliances, never been easier with the Home Depot's free haul away and delivery. Just pick out the latest models from top brands like GE, Maytag, Samsung, or LG. Let the Home Depot take care of the rest. Visit homedepot.com slash appliances for details. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. All right, your calls and tweets coming up on the other side. The All-Star Game will hopefully start sometime soon. We'll keep you up to date on it throughout the evening. You don't need to go anywhere else. Lots more to do on a Tuesday night edition of the John Stash Hour Show. And Jason Page sitting in, NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com. I was reading this health tip the other day, and a big smile came across my face. It said, if you eat fish, it can ward off a whole lot of stuff. They recommend eating fish about three times a week. I started saying, Soul Fish Cafe. What a good deal. Now I got a great excuse. I'll get healthier eating the best doggone catfish I've ever had. Memphis Flyers said, that's catfish in Memphis. They were featured in Southern Living. You're talking about Southern Charm and Friendly Service. Those are staples.